that the Lord took me up into heaven. Ya kwamba Bwana alinipeleka juu mbinguni. And I saw the hand of God the Father. Nami nikauona mkono wa Mungu Baba. When he broke the leaves from the tree of life. Wakati alipoyachuna majani kutoka kwa mti wa uzima. But this time he put for me in a tray, something like a tray almost like a glass tray. Lakini kwa wakati huu akaweka kwa chombo kama cha glasi sinia. Three times. Mara tatu. The first leaf, the second, the, this time very large leaves, green and very healthy. Mara ya kwanza, mara ya pili, mara ya tatu, na kwa wakati huu majani makubwa kabisa kabisa. And so, kwa hivyo, then I came back and I came live on it. And I told you majani of the tree of life. Ya mti wa uzima. And he said, na akasema that these are for the healing of the nations. Ya kwamba haya ni kwa ajili ya uponyaji wa mataifa. And then he said go and prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. Halafu akasema ya kwamba enda uandae njia kwa ajili ya kuja kwa Bwana. And then after that, baada ya hiyo, I came live on air. Nilikuja moja kwa moja hewani. And told you for that matter I have already seen in fact I saw before I left heaven I saw from heaven I already saw creepers walking. Na nikawaambia ya kwamba kwa kauli hiyo tayari nimeona kabla niondoke juu mbinguni niliwaona viwete wakitembea. And then I said like that live on air. I think it was about 10th 10th of this month. Halafu nikasema hiyo moja kwa moja kwenye masafa ya redio tarehe kumi mwezi huu. And you see now what happened. Na sasa mwaona kile ambacho kilitendeka. That very day a crippled child with cerebral palsy stood up as I spoke those words. Siku hiyo hiyo mtoto ambaye alikuwa na cerebral palsy akainuka na kutembea jinsi ambavyo nilinena hayo maneno. Um Jemima Chebiwot. Jemima Chebiwot. Very powerful classic biblical miracle. Muujiza wa nguvu kabisa kabisa maalum kabisa wa kibiblia. The miracles of the bible miujiza ya biblia and you see how humble that homestead is na mwaona jinsi ambavyo ni nyenyekevu kabisa hilo boma and i was saying yesterday that there is a big lesson when you watch that baby pulling herself on the soil on the muddy soil na nilikuwa nasema ya kwamba kuna somo kubwa kabisa kabisa unapomuona huyo mtoto akijivuta katika hayo matope And then the Lord lifting up that child and begins to walk for the first time in her life. Halafu Bwana kumuinua huyo mtoto, halafu anaanza kutembea kwa mara ya kwanza kabisa katika maisha yake. I don't know all that child is whether two and a half or three years old. Sijui mtoto huyo ana miaka mingapi? Sijui ni miaka 4 au nusu ama mitatu nusu ama Four years, four years old. Yes. Miaka 4. And so um the, that baby Jamima huyo mtoto Jemima And so now you look at that setting Kwa hivyo unaona muundo huo At the time when the judgment of Kwa wakati ambapo hukumu ya Bwana inaangamiza na kuharibu kabisa mataifa Then on this other side Halafu upande huu mwingine Courtesy of his two servants Kuzingatia tu manabii wake wawili Where they are on this side Mahali walipo upande huu They are coming back from heaven with the leaves for the healing for the for the restoration of the blood and the cross of Jesus for the authority of the Lord to be seen in the generation wanatoka mbinguni wanarudi toka mbinguni wakiwa na majani kwa ajili ya urejesho wa damu ya Yesu na msalaba wa Yesu and to affirm the authority of Christ Jesus na kudhibitisha mamlaka ya Kristo Yesu which is absolute grace and love ambayo ni neema kubwa kabisa na upendo and so if this is a message about the rapture of the church hivyo basi iwapo huu ni ujumbe kuhusiana na unyakuzi wa kanisa if this is a message about the church that gets to enter heaven iwapo huu ni ujumbe kuhusiana na kanisa ambalo linaingia mbinguni then it's such a dreadful message hivyo basi ni ujumbe wa kutisha because you see on the other side the judgment is raging kwa sababu unaona upande ule mwingine destroying the nations unaona ya kwamba ule upande mwingine hukumu ni kali kabisa anayaharibu mataifa and on this side is loving a, a humble family and lifting from the mud from the soil and the baby is learning to walk and balancing beautifully the miracles of the cross Halafu upande huu mwingine anainua familia ambayo ni nyenyekevu kabisa kabisa ambayo ilikuwa katika matope na kisha familia amesema familia nimeshtuka sana Am, anainua mtoto kiwete ambaye alikuwa kiwete kiwete kabisa kabisa alikuwa katika matope halafu mtoto huyo anatembea kijaribu kujisawazisha kwa njia kupendeza sana So here is loving 
Hivyo hapa anapenda Even for the Lord to choose that homestead that you see that was too classic. Hata kwa Bwana kuchagua hilo boma ambalo mwaona hiyo ni kuu kabisa. It is a classic most classical setting. Ni mpango ulionyete kabisa na muhimu na waajabu kabisa. Because kwa sababu in the skyscrapers of this world he has struck them with coronavirus. Katika majengo marefu marefu ya ulimwengu huu ameyagonga na virusi vya corona. In upstate New York in rich neighborhoods of UK and Sweden and Finland and where and Denmark he, he, he has struck them so there's there's fear the judgment is here. Kule New York, kule Denmark, kila mahali New York amewagonga kabisa kabisa hukumu iko hapa. The so called alpha nations. Yale yaitwayo mataifa ya kifahari. And then on this side, halafu upande huu, he chooses the pavilion of his glory. Anachagua jukwaa la utukufu wake. Where he wants to demonstrate his glory from. Mahali ambapo anataka kudhihirishia utukufu wake. And then he does that. Halafu anafanya hivyo. He shows love. Anaonyesha upendo. Mercy. Rehema and grace na neema disposition of blessedness udhihirisho wa baraka and so i said let us be careful with the message coming out of that kind of setting hivyo nikasema ya kwamba wacha tuwe uangalifu kabisa na aina ya ujumbe unaotokana na mpango wa namna hiyo because kwa sababu hali ya aina hiyo tafadhali i don't have to we, today we have a very long sermon after about three o'clock so the, the, there is a the, the, there is a message let us be careful Kunao ujumbe kabisa wacha tuwe waangalifu There is a message Kunao ujumbe Because Kwa sababu It seems the Lord is saying Yaonekana Bwana anasema He is saying Anasema that uh, these are the people he loves Ya kwamba hawa ndio watu anawapenda And so there is need for a lesson a learning Hivyo basi kunalo hitaji la funzo kusoma that the sophisticated church of today can learn from this homestead why did god choose them as the pavilion for displaying his glory in the heart of judgment why ya kwamba makanisa yaliyo ya kisasa ya wakati huu yanaweza kujifundisha kutokana na boma hili je ni kwa nini bwana aliwachagua kuwa jukwaa la utukufu wake kwa wakati huu ni kwa nini in the heart of the most aggressive and most dreadful judgment of god katika moyo wa hukumu kali kali kabisa ya mungu why kwa nini so these are the questions we need to be asking hivyo haya ndio maswali ambayo tupaswa kuwa tunauliza why has the lord chosen that very what is the lord showing the world what is he showing us what is the message ni kwa nini bwana amechagua boma hilo je ni nini ambacho bwana anaonyesha ulimwengu because The, the, the mud the little cripple is pulling herself on the mud kwa sababu, it has rained kwa sababu matope yule mtoto anajivuta pale kwenye matope kumenyesha thank you michael take one more and that was that's it yes because thank you so so now Sasa, what is the lord showing the world je bwana anaonyesha nini ulimwengu what is he intending to teach the modern and postmodern church of this day Je, anakusudia kufundisha nini kanisa la kisasa la usasa? The postmodern churches Ma- the, you are in a place where the judgment is raging. Makanisa ya kisasa mko mahali ambapo hukumu inawaka kabisa. With the coronavirus. Na virusi vya corona. And the, the global economic collapse. Na ukuporomoka kwa uchumi wa ulimwengu wote mzima. And yet, na ilhali, on this other side he chooses this home. He says this shall be the the palace the palace of my glory upande huu mwingine anachagua hili boma anasema ya kwamba hii itakuwa kasri la utukufu wangu this shall be the pavilion of my glory itakuwa jukwaa la utukufu wangu the palace of my glory kasri la utukufu wangu this shall be where i show my love hapa patakuwa mahali ambapo ninaonyesha upendo wangu Amazing. Ya shangaza. Really amazing. Ya shangaza kabisa. And so we are celebrating this wonderful miracle when I decreed just a few days ago. Hivyo tunasherehekea muujiza huu wa kupendeza kabisa wakati nilipotangaza siku chache zilizopita. 
that now the Lord is going to bring revival in the heart of this judgment in the midst of this judgment. Ye yeah, kwamba sasa Mungu anaenda kuleta uvuvio katikati ya moyo wa hukumu hii. And also na pia by the Lord doing so because kwa, the prophecy you hear me say I've seen cripples get up. Kwa Bwana kufanya hivyo kwa sababu katika unabii huo unanisikia nikisema ya kwamba nimewaona viwete wakiinuka. Before I came back to the earth. Kabla nirudi katika ulimwengu. And then the Lord confirmed Halafu Bwana anadhibitisha by raising he, could, he is also going to open blind eyes and so forth he could have started blind eyes but by beginning with the cripples i spoke in the prophecy anaenda pia kwa kufungua macho ya vipofu na kuendelea lakini kwa kwanza na viwete ambao nilinena katika unabii confirming that yes indeed these two prophets were up here in heaven akidhibitisha ya kwamba ndio kwa hakika hawa manabii wawili walikuwa hapa juu mbinguni the physical evidence is there now dhibitisho halisia liko pale sasa a cripple total cripple pulling a biblical cripple pulling herself on the on the mud or the dust kiwete kiwete kamilifu kabisa kabisa kiwete wakibibilia akijivuta katika matope katika vumbi getting up akinuka and walking it is a wonder na kutembea ni maajabu where hospitals have failed mahali ambapo hospitali zimeshindwa kabisa and abandoned them na kuacha kabisa they are now abandoned in the village to rot there sasa wamewachwa kule katika vijiji ili kwamba waoze huko they say cerebral palsy wanasema cerebral palsy there is nothing we can do hakuna chochote tunaweza kufanya and then the lord sends his two prophets to pronounce During this time when we are having this word. Halafu Bwana anawatuma hawa manabii wake wawili wakuu kutangaza wakati huu ambapo tunafanya hao ujumbe. That have come from heaven. Ya kwamba nimetoka mbinguni. And this time he placed the leaves in a glass like tray. Na wakati huu glass like vessel a tray. Na wakati huu aliyaweka yale majani ya mti wa uzima katika chombo kama glasi sinia. Place three times. Na akaweka mara tatu. Three leaves. Majani matatu. They said now I see creepers getting up. Na nikasema sasa ninawaona viwete wakiinuka. And today in your screens is a creepo that has gotten up. Na leo hii na leo hii katika runinga zetu. How awesome. Leo hii katika runinga zetu kuna yakiwete ambaye ameinuka na kutembea ya ajabu namna gani. What times are we in? And yes. I know I'm told we are number two globally already as we are people are very hungry for this. So how awesome that we are living to see this time this dispensation in the church ni ya kupendeza namna gani ya kwamba tunaishi kuona nyakati hizi majira haya katika kanisa so i want again to recap to bring you back to where we stopped last time hivyo basi tena ninataka kuwarejesha mahali ambapo tuliyekomea hapo wakati uliopita we have been having the conversation on the prophecy of the coronavirus tumekuwa tukifanya mazungumzo kuhusiana na unabii wa virusi vya corona the prophecy i gave Unabini liopeana December 1 the year 2015 more than 4 years back Tarehe moja Desemba mwaka 2015 zaidi ya miaka 4 iliyopita And lying there in the YouTube in the web Na ukiwa pale umelala tu katika mtandao kwenye YouTube public domain pa mahali pa hadharani And I gave it live on our global radio Jesus is Lord radio nami nikapeana moja kwa moja kwenye redio yetu ya ulimwengu wote mzima redio ya Yesu ni Bwana and people made notes na watu wakaandika others record as usual na wengine wakarekodi kama kawaida and so now you can go back to your notes you can go back to your recordings that i gave that december 1 2015 sasa mnaweza rudi katika marekodi zenu mnaweza rudi katika nakala zenu ambazo katika unabii huu nilipeana tarehe moja mwezi wa desemba mwaka 2015 when i won the earth nilipoonya ulimwengu that there is a big disease coming to the earth ya kwamba kunalo gonjwa kubwa kabisa ambalo linakuja duniani it is going to come from asia linaenda kutokea asia and is going to cause a big disease distress na linaenda kuleta dhiki kubwa kabisa inayotokana na hilo gonjwa and i said nikasema that there would be lack of equipment ya kwamba kutakuepo na ukosefu wa vifaa to handle the disease kulidhibiti hilo gonjwa and i also said pia nikasema big disease distress ya kwamba kutakuepo na dhiki kubwa kabisa inayotokana na hilo gonjwa 
nikasema that there would be need to culture to do a culture ya kwamba kutakuwepo na hitaji ya kufanya utafiti meaning there is need for research kumaanisha kwamba kuna hitaji la kufanya utafiti to understand the disease and to find a cure kuelewa hilo gonjo na kutafuta tiba and i talked about india that prophet i mentioned india with my tongue na nikazungumza kuhusiana na india katika unabii huo nilitaja india kwa ulimi wangu you saw india is the one that broke the record in this this attack this this uh, this, uh, um, this judgment maona india ndio iliyovunja rekodi katika hukumu hii because a lockdown of a whooping 1.3 billion people that is a wonder kwa sababu a wonder has happened. Kwa sababu watu bilioni 1.3 walifungiwa. Hayo ni maajabu, maajabu yametendeka. I don't know whether they have opened yet or not yet, but 1.3 billion. Watu bilioni 1.3 sijui kama wamefungwa. That is a wonder. Hayo ni maajabu. And so Kwa hivyo you now see the ventilators. Mwaona sasa mashina ya kupumua shortage of ventilators shortage of hospital beds upungufu wa mashine ya kupumua upungufu wa vitanda vya vyumba mahututi so we have been looking at that prophecy and asking what is the message of the lord from that prophecy hivyo tumekuwa tukiangazia huo unabii na kuuliza je ni ujumbe wa bwana upi kutokana na huo unabii but if you listen to that prophecy four years ago inside there is the message lakini ukiusikiliza unabii huo uliopeanwa miaka 4 iliyopita mle ndani kunao ujumbe And he said na akasema that when you see these things take place ya kwamba mtakapoona mambo haya yakitendeka make sure that your name is written in the lamb's book of life hakikisheni ya kwamba majina yenu yameandikwa kwenye kitabu cha uzima cha mwana kondoo and so that is the message hivyo basi huo ndio ujumbe in other words the lord is saying the coming of the messiah is near kwa maneno mengine bwana anasema ya kwamba kuja kwa masia kumekaribia and we saw that this prophecy of the coronavirus falls right under the vision of July 29 2009 na tukaona ya kwamba unabii huu wa virusi vya corona uko moja kwa moja chini ya maono ya tarehe 29 July mwaka 2009 When the Lord brought me into his throne in heaven. Wakati Bwana aliponileta ndani ya enzi yake mbinguni. And he showed me the lamp break the fourth seal on the holy sacred scroll of God. Na akanionyesha mwana kondoo wa Mungu akivunja lakiri ya nne katika gumbo takatifu la Mungu. The holy sacred scroll of heaven gombo takatifu sana la mbinguni and then the fourth living creature was sent by the father to speak with me alafu kiumbe wa nne mwenye uhai akatumwa na baba ili azungumze nami after he talked with me then he went back to where the glory is and he released the ride of the fourth horse baada alipozungumza na mimi akarudi mahali ambapo utukufu ulikuwa alafu akamwachilia yule mpanda farasi wa farasi wa the whole place has glory mahali kote kuna utukufu at the throne of god katika enzi ya mungu But we went back towards the right like this. Lakini alienda upande wa kuume namna hii. And then released the rider of the fourth horseman of the apocalypse. Halafu akamwachilia yule mpanda farasi wa farasi wa nne wa majira za kiunabii. And then he also came and we had this conversation. Halafu pia akaja tukafanya haya mazungumzo. The horse goes down lies down. Yule farasi anaenda na lala chini. He is yellowish green and I, I touch his face. His face is um, is parched. Ana rangi ya manjano kijani kibichi halafu ninaguza uso wake mbele uso wake mbele umeharibika you, you see all that in the book of revelation chapter 6 but he is uh, he is more of like a rotting corpse the body of that horse Unaona hayo yote kwenye ufunuo sura ya sita, lakini yeye ni kama maiti anayooza mwili wa huyo farasi and the rider has a turban tied back like this. Na mpanda farasi wake anachokilemba kilichofungwa na nyuma namna hii. And then they left and I saw them all over the earth. Halafu wakaondoka nikawaona kote kote ulimwenguni. And I said, Nikasema that the prophecy of the coronavirus December 1 2015. Ya kwamba unabii wa virusi vya corona tarehe moja Desemba mwaka 2015 falls right under this vision here. Uko moja kwa moja chini ya haya maono hapa. Because the rider is called death. That's why you see there's a lot of death globally. Kwa sababu mpanda farasi wake anaitwa mauti, ndio sababu mnaona kuna vifo vingi kabisa kote kote ulimwenguni. And he brings disease. Na analeta magonjwa. Some Bibles call it pestilences. Ma Biblia zingine yaita tauni. And so he brings disease and pestilences. Hivyo analeta magonjwa na tauni. 
and uh, he brings death na analeta kifo and that's why all of a sudden the earth is consumed with death ndio sababu ghafla binvu ulimwengu umetekwa na kifo and so that is where we are hapo ndipo tulikuwa to get understanding what is the instruction of Yahweh in the ongoing the fulfillment of this prophecy kupata kuelewa je maagizo ya Yahweh ni yapi katika kuendelezwa kwa huu unabii and so we we've, we've seen that the second part of that vision july 29th 2009 tumeona kwamba sehemu ya pili ya hayo maono ya tarehe 29 julai mwaka 2009 In the second part Katika sehemu ya pili I saw the church standing before the Lord Niliona kanisa likiwa limesimama mbele za Bwana Standing before the throne of God Likiwa limesimama mbele ya enzi ya Mungu That was really the first time for me to see, to see the church inside heaven finally Na huu ulikuwa mara ya kwanza kabisa kabisa kuliona kanisa ndani ya mbingu hatimaye Because I have seen severally as the Lord showed me has shown me the church being lifted the church being taken but i had never seen her inside heaven kwa sababu mara nyingi kama vile bwana amenionyesha nimeliona kanisa limeinuliwa nimeliona kanisa limenyakuliwa lakini kama kinuliwa likinyakuliwa need to focus here mara nyingi kama vile bwana amenionyesha mara nyingi kabisa nimeliona kanisa likinuliwa nimeliona kanisa likinyakuliwa lakini kama sikuwahi kuwa nimeona kanisa likiwa ndani ya mbingu and i gone all over the earth nami nimeenda kote kote ulimwenguni describing to them that i have seen the church appear before the throne of god nikiwaelezea kwamba nimeliona kanisa likiwa limesimama mbele za enzi ya Mungu and worshiping the lord in the most beautiful worship i have ever beheld na wakimwabudu bwana katika njia ya kupendeza kabisa kabisa katika ibada ambayo sijawahi kuona and so that is what we've been focusing on hivyo basi hicho ndicho tumekuwa tukilenga that the prophecy on the church appearing before the lord is about to be fulfilled ya kwamba huo unabii kuhusiana na kanisa kusimama mbele za bwana iko karibu kutimia and that you need to prepare na ya kwamba mnahitaji kujianda for that event kwa ajili ya hilo tukio and that without holiness na kwamba bila utakatifu nobody will see the lord hakuna mtu atamuona bwana and that has been the main center of our conversation for some months now na hiyo sasa imekuwa shina letu la kati la mazungumzo yetu kwa miezi kadhaa sasa it's a tremendous time in the history of the church ni wakati wa ajabu kabisa katika historia ya kanisa because the prophecy of the locusts coming the biblical locusts coming also has been fulfilled kwa sababu unabii wa nzige za kibiblia wakija pia umetimilizwa this year mwaka huu and so the lord is speaking in a very unique way to this generation hivyo basi bwana anazungumza kwa njia ya kipekee kabisa kwa hiki kizazi pleading with you akiwasihi to return to him mumrudie yeye and i told you nami nikawaambia that the reason you see the lord finally decided to fulfill the words of my tongue ya kwamba sababu ambayo hatimaye mnamuona bwana akiamua kutimiliza maneno ya ulimi wangu the words of december 1 2015 maneno ya tarehe 1 desemba mwaka 2015 is because the lord has been watching for a long time ni kwa sababu bwana amekuwa akitazama kwa muda mrefu a generation drift away totally from him kizazi kikipotoka kabisa na kuondoka kikamilifu kutoka kwake they deny him they say that he is not the one who created them wanamkataa wanasema ya kwamba sio yeye aliyewaumba they say he is irrelevant in their lives wanasema ya kwamba yeye sio wa maana katika maisha yao and yet it is jehovah the lord who sustains your breath all of you that are watching you cannot be alive even for a second without the lord sustaining your life ilhali ni jehova bwana adumishaye pumzi zenu yeye ambaye anaweka pumzi zenu ninyi nyote ambaye mnatazama hamwezi hata kuketi dakika moja asingelikuwa bwana kudumisha uhai wenu he has had a generation say that they have the big bang theory they have the theory of evolution they, they have said many things that are meant to provoke the anger of god amesikia kizazi kikisema ya kwamba wanayo nadharia ya mlipuko mkubwa wanayo nadharia ya mageuzi wamesema mambo mengi kabisa ambayo yamechochea hasira ya bwana saying nadharia nadharia theories wamekuwa wakisema nadharia nadharia they are trying to explain their existence outside god wanajaribu kuelezea uwepo wao kando na mungu the lord has seen the immorality that has drenched the earth flooded the earth 
sexual immorality and sexual perversion Bwana ameona usherati mwingi kabisa na upotovu mwingi kabisa katika usherati ambao umejaza na kujaa kabisa na kuenea katika ulimwengu. He has seen a generation literally wake up and celebrate sin. Ameona kizazi kiasilia wakiamka na kusherehekea dhambi. And he has watched also and seen a lot of apostles in the church that is supposed to have been the light of the generation. Na pia ametazama na kuona mwanguko wa imani katika kanisa ambalo lilipaswa kuwa nuru ya kizazi. And so blessed people. Hivyo basi watu wabarikiwa. The Lord had to shake the generation. Ilimbidi Bwana atingize kizazi. Using the coronavirus. Kutumia virusi vya corona. Number one to introduce these two prophets to the earth. Jambo la kwanza kuwatambulisha hawa manabii wawili kwa ulimwengu. Number two to make the earth know that whenever the Lord visits in his cloud, it is not a joke. Jambo la pili kusababisha ulimwengu utambue ya kwamba wakati wowote Bwana anapotembelea katika wingu lake sio mzaha. There is responsibility. Kunao wajibu. There are requirements when he comes. Kunayo mahitaji anapokuja. Because I called the Lord. Kwa sababu nilimwita Bwana. And you are hearing. Katika kusikia kwenu. Some of that is more than two years ago. Nyingine yake zaidi ya miaka miwili iliyopita. And I gave all the details how I have called God to come from his throne. Na nikapeana maelezo zaidi sana kuhusiana na jinsi ambavyo nimemwita Mungu kutoka katika enzi yake. To come in the thick cloud of his presence, his own glory. Ashuki. God the Father. Ashuke katika wingu nzito kabisa la utukufu wake la uwepo wake something he has not done in the entire new testament jambo ambalo hajawahi kufanya kabisa katika agano lote jipya and I, someone gets up and stands boldly and publicly before the eyes of the earth and says i have called god he is going to come Halafu mtu anainuka na anakuja anasimama hadharani na wazi kabisa kabisa machoni pa ulimwengu wote na kusema ya kwamba nimemwita Mungu aje na anaenda kuja. And so that is quite an awakening moment in the church. Huo ni wakati wa uamsho mkubwa kabisa katika kanisa. And you see the way he finally came even a few weeks before that meeting I gave a prophecy also. Na maona jinsi ambavyo hatimaye alikuja hata majuma kadhaa kabla ya mkutano huo nilipeana unabii pia said he's going to come to the meeting in Kisumu. Nikasema kwamba anaenda kuja katika mkutano Kisumu. In fact I said. Nilisema I see the cloud of God coming to the meeting to visit his servants. Naona wingu la Mungu likija katika mkutano kuwatembelea manabii wake. And the voice of the Lord said. Nayo sauti ya Bwana ikasema that the God of Elijah ya kwamba Mungu wa Elijah will be with his two prophets. Atakuwa pamoja na manabii wake wawili. And then you see now and in that prophet see before we went in december early part of december and then i said but i don't know which meeting it is but i seek you so much ahead of us here halafu katika unabii huo kabla tuende katika mapema ya desemba nikasema ya kwamba sijui ni mkutano upi hiyo itakuwa lakini ninaona mkutano wa kisumu uko mbele yetu hapa literally calling him and calling kisumu calling him to come to kisumu kimsingi, literally live globally kimsingi nikimwita moja kwa moja katika masafa ya ulimwengu wote mzima ashuke na aje kisumu now look how he came all the way from the other side of the ocean of the lake sasa tazama jinsi ambavyo alikuja katika kote kote katika ule upande mwingine wa bahari and he wanted everybody all and sundry everybody globally to know that look i am going i have been called i have come na alitaka everybody to see and record him he wanted people to see him and capture him coming obeying the call of his prophets Oy! alitaka kila mtu kila mahali kote kote ulimwenguni apate kuona na kuona na kurekodi ya kwamba tazama nimeitwa ninaenda manabii wangu wa kuwa kutisha wameita nimeitwa na nimeitika ninaenda wameniita na ninaenda kwao nimeitika mimi Mungu Baba Jehovah nimeitwa nimeitika that I have been called and I have obeyed I have come Nimeitwa nami nimeitika nimekuja I have been called Nimeitwa In the most historic visitation of this life Katika mtembeleo wa kihistoria kabisa 
katika mtembeleo wa kihistoria kabisa kabisa wa maisha haya na nyakati hizi. And did not do this in the New Testament. Na hakufanya hivi katika agano jipya. Until now. Hadi wakati huu. And all this the Lord is doing to awaken a generation. Na haya yote Bwana anayafanya ili kuamsha kizazi. And that's why. Ndio sababu We have been having a conversation here. Tumekuwa tukifanya mazungumzo hapa. On the second part of the July 29th 20, 2009 vision. Ka- July 29th 2009 vision the second part the church appearing before the throne of God. Katika sehemu ya pili ya maono ya tarehe 29 Julai mwaka 2009 kanisa likiwa limesimama mbele ya enzi ya Mungu. And also na pia I don't want you to lose sight of the prophecy of January 15th 2017. Sitaki msahau unabii wa tarehe 15 Januari mwaka 2017. When the Lord lifted me up above the earth. Wakati Bwana aliponinua juu juu ya dunia. And the voice asked me to look left. Halafu sauti ikaniuliza niangalie upande wa kushoto. And down. Na chini. Then that was the exact electric moment when the church had just left the soil it was such a spectacular huo ulikuwa wakati hasa kabisa kabisa ambapo dunia kanisa lilikuwa limeondoka tu katika dunia namna hii they had just lifted off lilikuwa limeinuka tu hivi and i saw the glory of the lord pulling the church up nami nikauona utukufu wa mungu ukivuta kanisa juu they went left and turned right walienda kushoto wakageuka kulia when they turned right they crossed right in my eyes like this in front of me like this walipogeuka kulia walivuka machoni pangu namna hii mbele ya macho yangu namna hii then the huge cloud that you see coming to kisumu that i called god the father that cloud now he appeared next to me here Halafu hilo wingu kubwa kabisa kabisa ambalo maona lilikuja Kisumu Mungu Baba aliita aje Kisumu Mungu Baba ambaye niliita aje Kisumu halafu akaja 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 Kisumu halafu wingu hilo nikaona limefungwa mlango hapa focus on English so the cloud appeared right here wingu lilikuja upande huu and open the door halafu likafungua mlango And then when they were just about to enter the cloud glorious stairs were lowered. Wakati ambapo walikuwa tu karibu kuingia katika wingu ngazi za utukufu zikashushwa. Then I saw them in their glorious garments. Halafu nikawaona katika mavazi yao ya utukufu. And each one of them has a turban by the way. Na kila mmoja wao ana kilemba. So it's totally they, they have tight turbans and also their garment is like that the the sleeve is connected with a cloth to the main cloth wamefunga vilemba halafu mtiririko wa mkono wao umeunganishwa hadi katika lile vazi kuu so if they did this you'd see you'd think they have wings but it's a cloth that has connected from the tip of the sleeve like this up to somewhere here the same this way hivyo wangefanya hivyo ungefikiria ya kwamba wana mabawa lakini ni mtiririko ambao umeunganika kutoka kwa mkono wao hadi katika vazi kuu namna hii hapa now giving us the secrets of eternity sasa ninawapatia siri za umilele the secrets of god siri za mungu the secrets of the kingdom of heaven where you want to go to siri za ufalme wa mbinguni mahali ambapo ninyi nyote mwataka kwenda the garment of righteousness the secrets of righteousness vazi la uhaki siri za uhaki And so I saw their glorious feet touch the glorious stairs of eternity. Hivyo niliona miguu yao ya utukufu ikiguza ngazi za utukufu za milele. I saw their glorious feet. Niliona miguu yao ya utukufu touching the glorious stairs of everlasting life. Ikiguza ngazi za utukufu za maisha ya milele. And their contemporaries, their colleagues who did not believe Jesus. Na wale wenzao ambao hawakumwamini Yesu. Their colleagues who were Christians but did not listen to the prophets of repentance and holiness. Wenzao ambao walikuwa wa Kristo na hawakuwasikiliza manabii wa toba na utakatifu. Their colleagues who chose to blackmail the two prophets that were sent to prepare the church. Wenzao ambao walichagua kuadhihaki manabii wawili ambao walitumwa kuandaa kanisa. As their feet touch the glorious stairs of eternity. Wakati miguu yao ilipokanyaga ngazi za utukufu za umilele. Their colleagues. Wenzao. Their feet will touch the everlasting fire of hell miguu yao itaguza na kukanyaga moto wa jehanamu wa milele when the right time comes wakati mwafaka utakapotimia so the contrast is too big to discuss hivyo hiyo tofauti ni kubwa kabisa hata kuijadili it is not 
impossible to convince you to go to heaven. It's not. It is obvious. The hellfire is hellfire. Let me tell you something about hell. Hell has all people. Hell has kings. Hell has the mighty people. It has the generals, the princesses. Hell has lawyers. It has doctors. It has widows. It has orphans. It has single girls and single young men. Hell has engineers. There are billionaires in hell. Millionaires are there. Atheists are there. Christian Pentecostals are there. The evangel- evangelical Christians are there. The Catholics are there. The SDAs are there. The, the Presbyterians are there. The Muslims are there. All religions, Hindus are there. Hell never rejects anybody. The Bible says it has opened his mouth. It is, it is swallowing everybody. It accepts everybody. And lately hell has expanded her belly. Because he realized there are more people coming in. And hell never has enough of her food. She never gets satiation. She never eats to her satisfaction. She is never satisfied. Even if she takes 10,000 people today, tomorrow she is still hungry once more. Kamwe kabisa jehanamu haishibi kwa chakula chake hata kama itawameza watu 1000 leo hii kesho tena iko na njaa inataka wengi zaidi And that's why Ndio sababu I am saying Ninasema that this is a beautiful moment in the history of the church when the coming of the Messiah is being announced when the Lord is saying that you need to prepare and we took this tremendous example of the book of Zechariah in the book of Zechariah chapter 3 Zechariah sees Joshua taking advantage of the door that is open. The door that is opened of grace. Joshua takes advantage of the door that is open. The door of repentance. And he enters in other words it's as though Joshua is aware of the fact that always enter before the door closes. But when you look at the condition under which Joshua appears he says he appeared in filthy garments and I said that that is happening all the time to the church today that's why you see the garment of the church today one stain is called sexual sin it's a huge conspicuous stain another stain is called false prophets she literally sits down and listens to false prophets another stain is called false apostles the people that preach money, 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 the false prophets, false apostles, they tell you, sow a seed and get a miracle. They are busy doing business in the house of God. When you look at the garment of the church that she received, 
ukiangalia lile vazi la kanisa ambalo alipokea it has another big stain linadoa lingine kubwa kabisa call the gospel of prosperity litolo injili ya ufanisi look at the stain ukiangalia hilo doa the, the garment rather that hilo vazi has another stain called the liberal theology it, the modern theology that is very understanding it blends with your lifestyle it accepts the modern times it fits in well with it inadoa lingine vazi linadoa lingine ambalo linaitwa theologia ambayo ni huru ambayo inakubaliana sana theologia ya kisasa the gospel of today injili ya kisasa theologia ya kisasa that blends the church ambayo inaunganisha kanisa perfectly with the modern world kwa vizuri kabisa na ulimwengu wa sasa tells you don't worry. Ya kwamba inawaambia kwamba msijali. The grace is much. Neema ni nyingi. Don't fear, don't cry. Usiogope, usilie. The blood is much. Damu ni nyingi. The love is unconditional. Upendo hauna masharti. And they fail to tell the church that without holiness nobody will see the Lord. Na wao wanakosa kuambia kanisa ya kwamba bila utakatifu hakuna mtu atakayemuona Mungu. Since we are number one globally right now. Kwa sababu tuko nambari ya kwanza kote kote ule Let me just read the book of Hebrews here. Wacha nisome tu kitabu cha Waebrania hapa. Hebrews chapter 12 14 globally before the eyes of the world. Kitabu cha Waebrania 12 mstari wa 14 kote kote ulimwenguni mbele ya macho ulimwengu. Before the entire earth and now we are number one globally right now. Bele ya ulimwengu wote mzima sasa kwamba tuko nambari moja katika mapeperusho haya ulimwengu wote. In just one platform by the way we are all over. Tuko. So and then it says Hebrews 12 14 Wabrania 12:14 And he says Anasema make every effort to live in peace with everyone Tafuteni kwa bidii kuwa na amani na watu wote and to be holy na, holy hallelujah na, holy na kuwa watakatifu watakatifu The Bible pronounces holiness this is a call a call for the church a call to the church that she may be holy Biblia inatangaza utakatifu. Huu ni mwito kwa kanisa, mwito kwa kanisa ili kwamba apate kuwa mtakatifu. Listen to me the world. Nisikilizeni ulimwengu. He says, Anasema, without holiness no one will see the Lord. Bila huo utakatifu hakuna mtu atakayemuona Bwana. I just wanted to read it for the record. Nilitaka tu kuisoma kwa ajili ya rekodi. That you may see where things have gotten wrong this late. Ili kwamba mpate kuona mali ambapo mambo yameenda mrama wakati huu wa kuchelewa. And he say. Na anasema that the standard of heaven. Ya kwamba kiwango cha mbinguni will not lower. Kamwe kabisa hakitapunguzwa. He say. Anasema that the standard of rapture. Ya kwamba kiwango cha unyakuzi. The benchmark of the Lord. Kile kiwango cha Bwana. The yardstick of the gospel. Kipimio cha injili. Will not change. Kamwe kabisa hakitabadilika. He say. Anasema so without holiness. Kwa maana bila utakatifu. No human being. Hakuna mwanadamu yeyote. Will enter heaven. Ataingia mbinguni. Without holiness. Bila utakatifu. No human being. Hakuna mwanadamu. Will see God. In other words they will be in hell. And that's why this becomes the most quality moment, a pivotal time. Ndio sababu huu afanyika kwa wakati wa manufaa kabisa for us to be able yeji. to correct. Kwetu sisi kupata kurekebisha. Make a correction in our Christian salvation. Kufanya marekebisho katika wokovu wetu wa Kikristo. To now focus on what matters most. Ili kwamba sasa kulenga kwa kile ambacho kinajalisha zaidi. The holiness of the Lord in the church. Utakatifu wa Bwana ndani ya kanisa. And yes it is true. Ya kwamba ndio ni kweli. That only rip- Repentance can lead you to the holiness of God. Ya kwamba ni toba peke yake inaweza kukuongoza katika utakatifu wako. So I am announcing the hour for repentance to the nations of the earth. Hivyo ninatangaza saa ya toba kwa mataifa ya ulimwengu. And so today, kwa hivyo leo hii, I want us to continue advancing that conversation on how to appear before the Lord. Ninataka tuendelee kuendeleza hayo mazungumzo kuhusiana na jinsi ya kusimama mbele za Bwana. How should the church pre Here. Je, kanisa la paso kujiandaa namna gani? For standing before the Lord. Kwa kusimama mbele za Bwana. Like I saw them. Kama vile niliwaona. In that vision of July 29. Kama vile katika maono haya ya tarehe 29 July. The year 2009. Mwaka 2009. When I saw them finally standing before the Lord and worshiping Yahweh and the Lamb. 
nikiwa ni wakati nilipowaona hatimaye wakiwa wamesimama mbele za Bwana wakimwabudu Yahweh pamoja na mwana kondoo I know that all of you tuned in from all the continents of the earth Ninajua nyinyi nyote ambao mnasikiliza kutoka mabara yote ya ulimwengu From all the nations of the earth Kutoka katika mataifa yote ya ulimwengu It is obvious Ni wazi kabisa that all of you long to be among the number that will enter inside heaven and then stand before the glory of God. Ya kwamba ninyi nyote mnatamani kuwa miongoni mwa idadi ambayo itaingia ndani ya mbingu halafu kusimama mbele ya utukufu wa Mungu. To get into everlasting life. Kuingia katika maisha ya milele. Not everlasting death and fire in hell. Sio katika moto na kuzimu kwa kule kwa milele jehanamu. And last week we saw na hapo mojuma lilopita tuliona I mean I mean the last time I was here this week Wakati wa mwisho nilipokuwa hapa wote tuliona in our last church service Katika ibada yetu ya mwisho ya kanisani we saw that there is a notion Tuliona ya kwamba kunayo mawazo fulani a false notion Kunayo mawazi fulani ya uongo notion Mawazo fikra za kuongo That has confused this generation Ambazo zimechanganya kabisa hiki kizazi When you thought Wakati mlipofikiria They thought Walifikiria That when you die that is it you have died Ya kwamba ukifa hiyo ndio hiyo imeisha umekufa And we saw from the Bible Na tukaona kutoka katika Biblia In Hebrews chapter 9 Kwenye Waebrania sura ya 9 verses 20 28. Kwanza ya msero 26 hadi 28. When he says unto man is appointed once to die. Wakati aliposema kwamba kwa mwanadamu amewekewa kufa mara moja. After that to face judgment of God. Baada ya hiyo kukutana na hukumu ya Mungu. The wrath of God. Ghadhabu ya Mungu. And so kwa hivyo we also read from Ecclesiastes 11 verse 3. Pia tukasoma kwenye kitabu cha Mhubiri 11 mstari wa 3. Where we saw. Mahali ambapo tuliona. He said when the clouds carry rain. Anasema kwamba wakati ambapo mawingu yamebeba mvua. They are faithful to obey the law of God. The law of God's creation. Hiyo ni hiyo uaminifu kabisa kutii sheria ya uumbaji wa Mungu. They release the rain. Inaachilia hiyo mvua. They release the burden. Inaachilia ule mzigo. They release the weight. Inaachilia ule mzigo. Uzito. So Kwa when hivyo. they do so Ana inapofanya hivyo they obey God's law of creation the law he placed forward Zinati ile sheria ya uumbaji ya Mungu ambaye aliwekeza And then he says Halafu anasema that whether a tree falls to the north or to the south Ya kwamba iwapo mti utaanguka kaskazini ama kusini Where it falls Mahali uangukapo there it shall lie Hapo utalala There it lies Hapo unalala And he said that when that tree falls there there it will lie. Na anasema kwamba wakati mti huu unapoanguka pale hapo utalala. And I said Nami nikasema that, that was such a sobering message from the Lord to this generation. Ya kwamba huo ulikuwa ujumbe wa muhimu kabisa kutoka kwa Bwana kwa hadi kizazi hiki. In other words the Lord say Kwa maneno mengine Bwana akisema that everybody must die. Ya kwamba kila mtu lazima afe. What matters is where are you headed to after death? Kile ambacho kinajalisha ni kwamba je unaenda wapi baada ya kifo? And we saw that death is simply a door. Na tukaona ya kwamba kifo ni mlango tu. That ushers you into another realm, the eternal realm. Ambao inakuingiza katika nyanja nyingine ya umilele. And that when you are on the earth here. Na kwamba wakati uko katika duniani hapa. Based on Luke chapter 16:19 31. Kuzingatia kwenye kitabu cha Luka 16:19 hadi 31. That when you are here. Ya kwamba ukiwa hapa. The Lord is making it very clear in Luke 16 verse 19 all the way to 31. Bwana anaiweka wazi kabisa kwenye kitabu cha Luka sura ya 16 19 hadi 31 That when you are on the earth here Ya kwamba ukiwa hapa duniani What you do with your life when you are here Kile ambacho unafanya na maisha yako ukiwa hapa duniani is what determines your destination where you will end up Ndio ambayo inaamua hatima yako mahali ambapo utaingia. And the Lord was saying. Na Bwana alikuwa anasema. That therefore you are such a blessed generation. Hivyo basi ninyi ni kizazi kilichobarikiwa. Because the rapture has not yet taken place. Kwa sababu unyakuzi haujatendeka. And you are watching and you are listening to me now. Nanyi mnatazama na kunisikiliza sasa. So you can literally change the course of events in your life. Hivyo basi ninyi mnaweza badilisha matukio katika maisha yenu. And literally change your destination today. Na kim singi kubadilisha hatima yako leo hii. And we moved on again. Na tukaendelea mbele tena. And we saw. Tukaona 
that even though God is pleading with the generation to repent yep. and receive the gospel and receive Christ. Ya kwamba hata ingawaje Bwana anakisihi kizazi ili kwamba kitubu na kumpokea Kristo na kupokea injili. However we saw in the gospel, we saw in the Bible that not all men, not all people will be saved. Hata hivyo tuliona katika injili, tuliona katika Biblia ya kwamba sio kila mtu ataokolewa. Therefore, hivyo basi, making it an extreme privilege. Ikifanya tunku kuu kabisa. Every time the Lord extends this door of repentance to you. Kila wakati Bwana anapouleta huu mlango wa toba kwenu. We ought to be running to enter. Tunahitaji kuwa tunakimbia kuingia. Shedding our sins. And so today I want to continue on that conversation because remember we didn't even begin Ninataka kuendelea katika mazungumzo hayo kwa sababu mwakumbuka hata hatukuanza. We didn't even start. Hata hatukuanza. We simply looked at the introduction. Tuliangazia tu utangulizi. The questions the Lord laid forth. Zile tahadhari ambazo Bwana aliweka. And so today. Kwa hivyo leo hii. I want to look at this. Ninataka kuangalia hili. Standing before the Lord. Kusimama mbele za Bwana. What does it take? Je, inagarimu nini? To stand before Yahweh. Kusimama mbele za Yahweh. What does it mean? Je, inamaanisha nini? To stand before the Lord. Kusimama mbele za Bwana. And I said, nikasema that there is no better conversation. Ya kwamba hakuna mazungumzo yaliyo bora zaidi. In the history of the church. Katika historia ya kanisa. That this conversation here. Kuliko haya mazungumzo hapa. Then the conversation that helps a generation to prepare to appear before their God. Mazungumzo yanayosaidia kizazi ili kujiandaa kusimama mbele za Mungu wake. And that there is no better generation. Na ya kwamba hakuna kizazi bora kabisa. To listen to this sermon on standing and cause you to embrace holiness na kukusababisha ukumbatia utakatifu and cause you to inculcate into your gospel repentance 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 perpetuamente eternally na ilikuwa imekuwezesha kuingiza katika injili yako toba toba milele na daima that only repentance ya kwamba ni toba peke Na kugeuka kabisa kutoka kwa sanamu za ulimwengu huu. And turning away from the sin of this earth. Kabisa kutoka kwa dhambi za ulimwengu huu. And returning to Jesus. Na kumrudia Yesu. Can deliver this generation. Inaweza kuokoa kanisa kizazi. And so today. Hivyo basi leo. I want to begin a very long conversation. Ninataka kuanza mazungumzo marefu kabisa. With you. Pamoja nanyi. Regarding standing before the Lord. Kuhusu kusimama mbele za Bwana. What does it mean? Je, inamaanisha nini? What does it take? Je, inagarimu nini? For one to come like Joshua did. Kwa mtu kuja kama vile Yoshua alivyofanya. And stand before the Lord. Na kusimama mbele za Bwana. In the Hebrew context. Katika muktadha wa Kiebrania. Standing before the Lord. I want to just mention this off the cuff. In the Hebrew context. Katika muktadha wa Kiebrania. Standing before the Lord. Kusimama mbele za Bwana. Essentially implies kimsingi ya maanisha signifies inamaanisha ministering unto the lord kuhudumu mbele za bwana and so kwa hivyo this is good
walipokuwa Misri There was so much torture and suffering Kulikuwepo na mateso mengi kabisa kabisa na kuteswa They cried out to the Lord Walimlilia Bwana And did the Lord delivered them Hadi Bwana akawakomboa And when they were delivered Na wakati walipokombolewa They were part of a grand master plan Walikuwa sehemu ya mpango mkubwa kabisa kabisa on how the Lord Yahweh had intended that he would deliver the entire humanity. It's amazing. He had planned and set out the blueprint the paradigm How he would deliver the entire humanity from the fall in the garden. Jinsi ambavyo atakomboa wanadamu wote kikamilifu kutokana na ule mwanguko katika bustani. When Adam and Eve wakati Adamu na Hawa decided to follow another road. Walipoamua kufuata barabara nyingine. And so kwa hivyo at Sinai katika Sinai There was a visitation. Kulikuwepo na mtembeleo. And we're going to walk stepwise. Na tunaenda kutembea hatua kwa hatua. That everybody may be on board. Ili kwamba kila mmoja aje katika upeo. That you may catch this gravity. Ili kwamba mpate kushika uzito huu. On standing before the Lord. Kuhusu kusimama mbele za Bwana. Because I have already seen kwa sababu tayari nimeona the church kanisa appear before the throne of god likiwa limesimama mbele ya enzi ya Mungu and standing before the lord na kusimama mbele za Bwana worshiping the lord wakimwabudu Bwana so blessed people kwa hivyo watu wabarikiwa the overriding statement i want us to start with kauli ya mwongozo ambaye nataka tuanze nayo is a statement that says ni kauli inayosema among those that approach me Miongoni mwa wale wanaonikaribia The Lord says Bwana anasema Among those that approach me Miongoni mwa wale wanaonikaribia I will prove myself holy Nitajithibitisha mimi kuwa mtakatifu In the sight of all people Machoni pa watu wote And I will be honored Nami nitaheshimiwa When the Lord gave the statement Wakati Bwana alipopeana hiyo kauli It became an overriding statement. Ilifanyika kauli ya mwongozo. The principle law. Hiyo sheria kanuni. That governs approaching Yahweh, standing before the Lord. Ambayo inaendeleza kumwendea Bwana kusimama mbele za Bwana. And so now. Hivyo basi sasa. When the Lord comes to visit. Wakati Bwana anapokuja kutembelea. The way he did in Kisumu. Kama vile alivyofanya Kisumu. Let us read and see. Wacha tusome na tuone. How the same cloud I called in Kisumu. Jinsi ambavyo hilo wingu hilo hilo nililoita Kisumu. Visited Mount Sinai. Alitembelea mlima Sinai. Visiting the children of Jacob. Akiwatembelea wana wa Yakobo. Masasa kama mkiniti iki kamilifu. And keep my covenant. Na kutunza agano langu. Then out of all the nations basi kutokana na mataifa yote you will be my treasured possession mtakuwa mali yangu ya thamani although the whole earth is mine ijapokuwa dunia yote ni mali yangu you will for me be a kingdom of priests ninyi mtakuwa kwangu ufalme wa makuhani a holy nation taifa takatifu these are the words you are to speak to the israelites haya ndio maneno utakayosema na wana wa israeli so moses went back and summoned the elders of the people kwa hiyo musa akarudi akawaita wazee wa watu and said before them all the words the lord had commanded him to speak na kuwaambia maneno yote ambayo Bwana alikuwa amemwamuru ayaseme. Verse 8. Mstari wa 8. The people all responded together. Watu wote wakajibu kwa pamoja. We will do everything the Lord has said. Tutafanya kila kitu Bwana alichokisema. Moses brought their answer back to the Lord. Na Musa akarudisha majibu yao kwa Bwana. Verse 9. Mstari wa 9. The Lord said to Moses. Bwana akamwambia Musa, I'm going to come to you in a dense cloud. Do you understand the visitation in Kisumu? 
nitakutia katika wingu nzito mwaelewe ule mtembeleo kule Kisumu I'm going to come to you nitakujia in a dense cloud katika wingu nzito the other version say a thick cloud ile tafsiri zingine zasema wingu nzito so that the people will hear me speaking with you ili watu wasikie nikinena pamoja nawe and will always put their trust and their faith in you na kila mara waweke tumaini lao kwako their trust and their faith in you tumaini lao na imani yao ndani yako then moses told the lord what the people had said kisha musa akamwambia bwana yale ambayo watu walikuwa wamesema and the lord said to moses na bwana akamwambia musa go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow nenda kwa watu ukawaweke wakfu leo na kesho have them wash their garments their clothes waambie wafue nguo zao mavazi yao and be ready for the third day na wawe tayari katika siku ya tatu because on the third day kwa sababu katika siku hii ya tatu the lord will come down on mount sinai bwana atashuka juu ya mlima sinai in the sight of all the people machoni pa watu wote verse 12 mstari wa 12 put limits for the people around the mountain weka mipaka kuzunguka mlima kwa ajili ya watu tell them uambie be careful that you do not approach the mountain Muwe waangalifu msije mkaukaribia mlima or touch the foot of it au kuuguza katika chini yake Whoever touches the mountain is to be put to death Yeyote atakayeuguza mlima hakika atauawa Again Exodus 19:13 verse 13 now Kutoka 19 mstari wa 13 sasa They are to be stoned and to be shot with arrows and not a hand is to be laid on them Hakika atapigwa mawe au kupigwa mishale mkono wa mtu hautamgusa No person or animals shall be permitted to live Hakuna mwanadamu au mnyama ataruhusiwa kuishi Only when the ram's horn sounds a long blast maybe may, may, they, may they approach the mountain ila tu wakati baragumu itakapopigwa kwa mfululizo ndipo watu wote watakapopanda mlimani After Moses had gone down to the mountain Baada ya Musa kushuka kutoka mlimani to the people Akaendea watu After Moses had gone down the mountain to the people he, is con- he consecrated them and they washed their garments their clothes Baada ya Musa kushuka kutoka mlimani akawaendea watu na kuwaweka wakfu wakafua nguo zao 15 Mstari wa 15. Then he said to the people. Kisha akawaambia watu, "Prepare yourselves for the third day." Jitayarisheni kwa ajili ya siku ya tatu. Stay away and abstain from sexual relations. Mwanaume yeyote asimkaribie mwanamke. On the morning of the third day. Asubuhi ya siku ya tatu. There was thunder. Kulikuwa na ngurumo na radi. There was thunder and lightning kulikuwa na ngurumo na radi okay. on the morning of the third day katika asubuhi ya siku ya tatu there was thunder and lightning kulikuwa na ngurumo na radi with a thick cloud over the mountain pamoja na wingu nene juu ya mlima and a very loud trumpet blast na mlio mkubwa sana wa tarumbeta everyone in the camp trembled kila mmoja aliyekuwa kambini akatetemeka then moses let the people out of the camp to go meet with Yahweh to meet with God Kisha Musa akawaongoza watu kutoka kambini kukutana na Mungu And they stood at the foot of the mountain Nao wakasimama chini ya mlima Mount Sinai was covered with smoke Mlima Sinai ulikuwa umefunikwa na moshi Because the Lord descended on it in fire Kwa sababu Bwana alishuka juu yake katika moto The smoke billowed up from it like smoke of a furnace Moshi wa moto huo ulipanda juu kama moshi kutoka kwenye tanuru kubwa And the whole mountain quaked and trembled violently Na mlima wote ukatetemeka kwa nguvu nyingi kabisa And the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder Nayo sauti ya tarumbeta ikawa kubwa zaidi na zaidi And Moses spoke and the voice of God answered him kisha Musa akazungumza na sauti ya Bwana ikamjibu Remember Kumbuka There is a prophecy it's on the web now it's on uh, it's on YouTube 
Kunao unabina uko katika YouTube kwenye mtandao. When the Lord spoke with me. Wakati Bwana aliponena pamoja nami. And he said. Akasema he is going to come. Anaenda kuja and speak with me loud. Na kuzungumza pamoja nami kwa sauti. I know this one or two years ago. It's, it's in the YouTube uko kwenye mtandao sijuni mwaka mmoja ama miwili iliyopita iko kwenye mtandao and i already saw i've already seen that day na tayari nimeiona hiyo siku when he has come in the cloud and he spoke with me loud and that i was able to speak back to him and he spoke back so we spoke loud aloud wakati ambapo alikuja katika wingu naye sasa alizungumza pamoja nami nami nikamzungumzia tukazungumza kwa sauti and then halafu i saw people recording so people it's amazing What shocked me is that, of course um, there is another conversation there is a behind the scenes conversation before that when I asked him Lord but people will record your voice Hivyo niliwaona watu wakirekodi hata hivyo kunayo mazungumzo mengine ambayo yapo kabla ya hiyo leo wakati ambapo nilimuuliza kwamba Bwana lakini watu watarekodi sauti yako And then he said Halafu akasema It's all right Ni sawa And so then I saw now I saw now the dream when that day comes. Sasa nikaona katika ndoto siku hiyo inapotimia. And I saw people record. Na nikaona watu wakirekodi. There is a prophecy on the YouTube right now. Kunao unabii katika mtandao wa YouTube sasa hivi. Of this repeat, of repeat of this. Ya marejeleo haya. There is a prophecy on the YouTube. Kunao unabii katika YouTube. Just like the prophecy on the breaking of the sixth seal is already on the YouTube. Kama vile unabiwa kuvunjwa kwa lakiri ya sita tayari uko katika YouTube. And so, kwa hivyo, it may be lying there dormant like the prophecy of the coronavirus. Huenda ikawa imelala tu pale kama vile unabiwa virusi vya corona. But the day does happen. Lakini siku itakapotimia. It will shake the earth eternally again. Itatingiza ulimwengu wote milele tena like the coronavirus. Kama vile virusi vya corona. For four years the prophet is lying there. Kwa miaka minne unabii ulikuwa umelala pale. My word. Maneno yangu. But when they are fulfilled it's unbelievable. Lakini wakati yanapotimilizwa ni ya ajabu kabisa. The earth is even wondering how to go back to school. I mean just unbelievable right now. Ulimwengu hata unashangaa jinsi ya kurudi shuleni ni ya ajabu sasa hivi. But there is a prophecy about this Lakin, going to happen which is in the youtube lakini kunao unabiwa hii ikienda kutendeka ambayo iko katika youtube and i saw people recording they oh what a generation they even recorded the voice of the lord speaking with these two prophets na niliwaona watu wakirekodi sauti ya bwana akizungumza pamoja na manabii wake wawili and so kwa hivyo he says anasema again tena The Lord descended on the top of Mount Sinai. Bwana akashuka juu ya mlima Sinai. Before that he said verse 19. Mstari wa 19 anasema, As the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder. Nayo sauti ya tarumbeta ikawa kubwa zaidi na zaidi. Moses spoke. Kisha Musa akazungumza. And the voice of God answered him. Na sauti ya Bwana ikamjibu. And he said, Bwana akasema that they may trust you. Ya kwamba wapate kukuamini wewe. He was going to do that. Alikuwa anaenda kufanya hivyo. That they may have faith in you and, and, and wapate, believe you and trust you. Ili kwamba wapate kuwa na imani ndani Put yako. Na, in you. na kuweka tumaini lao ndani yako. Then he says. Alafu anasema The Lord descended on the top of Mount Sinai. Bwana akashuka juu ya mlima Sinai and called Moses to the top of the mountain. Na akamwita Musa apande juu ya mlima. So Moses went up. Kwa hiyo Musa akapanda juu. Verse 21. Mstari wa 21. The Lord said to him. Na Bwana akamwambia. Go down and warn the people. Shuka chini ukawaonye watu. So they do not force their way through to see the Lord. Ili wasijipenyeze kutafuta kumuona Bwana. And many of them perish die na wengi wao waangamie wakafa and i remember the kisumu visitation na mimi nakumbuka mtembelee wa kisumu that night when he came to talk to me that the next day next morning he is coming usiku huo wakati alipokuja kuzungumza pamoja nami ya kwamba siku inayofuata anakuja because i seen him far towards the lake on the side kwa sababu nilikuwa nimemwona mbali kabisa katika upande wa bahari upande huo mwingine but i was very shocked because i thought i'd seen him very far beyond the lake lakini nilishtuka kabisa kwa sababu nilikuwa nilifikiria kwamba nilikuwa nimemwona mbali mbali kabisa kupita bahari 
And then all of a sudden, Fupi had arrived. I was very shocked. And then he hit me. The cloud, the glory hit me. The glory has weight. So when he hit me, I was so shocked because I thought I'd seen him very far. But I was so shocked he had arrived and the glory hit me. And then, the cloud actually covered me in that dream. And then, my voice he said, I almost killed them all. Karibu ni wawe wote. So this is a very dreadful moment. And then you see the next morning he came. Halafu muona siku asubuhi iliyofuata akaja. Go down and warn the people. Shuka chini ukawaonye watu. So they do not force their way through to see the Lord. Ili wasijipenyeze kutafuta kumuona Bwana. And many of them perish die even the priests who approach the lord must consecrate themselves or the lord will break out against and kill them so moses say to the lord the people cannot come up mount sinai because you yourself warned us put limits around the mountain and set it apart as holy then the Lord replied so now standing before the Lord I am talking to a generation that is so modern to the extent that even their God is a modern God. Now you can see right away my intent my purpose here in Exodus 19 was essentially to present to you the gravity of whom you are coming to stand before. Because when I watch the present generation of Christians of mankind of people I see as though they are equal there is a god they are worshiping who is actually equal to them kunae mungu ambaye wanamwabudu ambaye ni sawa sawa amelingana na wao they are not afraid of the lord wao hawamuogopi mungu they have no fear of god hawana hofu ya bwana they have no perception on the gravity of yahweh hawaja utazama ule uzito wa yahweh they treat the Lord like a friend. Even I whom he speaks with by voice daily, daily. And several times. I who is his friend. Who can call him to Kericho. And you see him come. Just a few hours, instant prophecy. And descend and you see the cloud almost touching my head. But even I, when the Lord speaks, I tremble. But then look at this generation. They are so modern. So now, I am introducing to a modern generation the God Yahweh whom they worship. Because when Christ Jesus came and brought the grace 
na kuleta neema when i look at the way you live your christianity ninapotazama jinsi ambavyo mnaishi ukristo wenu your salvation wokovu wenu you are living as though mnaishi kana kwamba when jesus came wakati yesu alipokuja with the grace na neema he took away the holiness of god aliondoa utakatifu wa mungu as though kana kwamba when the grace came wakati neema ilipokuja then god now sasa bwana does not consider holiness. Yes, sasa hazingatii utakatifu. As though kana kwamba that when the grace came to you ya kwamba wakati neema ilipokuja kwenu God now Mungu sasa tolerates sin. Yeye anakubaliana na dhambi. That's why I say it. Ndio sababu nikasema in this message on standing before the Lord. Katika huu ujumbe kuhusu kusimama mbele za Bwana. I want to begin with the gravity of God. Ninataka kuanza na uzito wa Mungu. The one you are coming to stand before. Yeye ambaye mnakuja kusimama mbele zake. Do you really know Yahweh the God of Israel? Je, kwa kweli mwamjua Yahweh Mungu wa Israeli? He say. Anasema that when he come. Ya kwamba anapokuja. The mountain quakes violently. Mlima unatetemeka kwa fujo kabisa. Shaking and tearing violently. Ukitingizika na kutetemeka kwa fujo kabisa. The trumpets grow louder. Ile sauti ya tarumbeta inakuwa kubwa na kubwa zaidi. The smoke like a furnace. Moshi kama vile tanuru ya moto. It is dreadful. Ni ya kutisha. That is the one you are going to stand before. Huyo ndiye ambaye mnaenda kusimama mbele zake. Do you know whom you are going to stand before? Je, mwamjua yeye ambaye mnaenda kusimama mbele zake? Every time you enter the church. Kila wakati mnapoingia kanisani. To worship the Lord. Kumuabudu Bwana. Do you really know whom you are worshiping? Je, kwa kweli mwamjua ni nani mnayemwabudu? The mighty God of Israel. Mungu mkuu wa Israeli. The most terrible God of Israel. Mungu wa kutisha sana wa Israeli. When I brought you the grace. Na uwepo aliwaletea neema. He is still God. Hata kama aliwaletea neema yeye bado ni Mungu. He is still this dreadful. Yeye bado ni wakutisha namna hii. In fact it is because of this dread. Hata hivyo ni kwa sababu ya hii tishio that he brought Jesus. Alimleta Yesu. But that did not mean ever. Lakini kamwe kabisa hiyo haikumaanisha katu. That now. Ya kwamba sasa he is not holy. Ya kwamba yeye sio mtakatifu. Never. Hakuna kabisa. If there's anything that lasts forever. Iwapo kuna kitu ambacho kinadumu milele. From the eternity of the eternities. Kutoka katika umilele wa umilele. Passing through this day here. Ikipita katika hii siku hapa. Into the eternity of the eternities. Hadi katika umilele wa umilele. It is the holiness of Jehovah. Ni utakatifu wa Yehova. Never changes. Kamwe haubadiliki. And so kwa hivyo step by step blessed people hatua kwa hatua watu wabarikiwe So now sasa the Lord has come Bwana amekuja And I said follow me step wise Nami nilisema nifuateni hatua kwa hatua Today leo hii you are going to understand the veracity and the gravity of standing before the Lord Mnaenda kuelewa ule uzito na udhamana wa kusimama mbele za Bwana The dreadfulness Ule tishio because kwa sababu now he has come in that way sasa amekuja katika njia hiyo and the children of israel have seen his dread na wana wa israeli wameona tishio lake they have seen his terror wameona tisho lake and remember na kumbuka just a few months ago miezi michache tu iliyopita they have seen the plagues in egypt walikuwa wameona zile tauni mapigo katika misri they have seen his terror there Wal- his power and his authority over there walikuwa wameona tisho lake huko nguvu zake na mamlaka yake huko do you know what it means to stand before the lord che Mwajua ndina maanisha nini kusimama mbele za Bwana? Let us move on. Wacha tuendelee. So now, sasa after the Lord brings them out. Baada ya Bwana kuwatoa, then the Lord now wants to roll out his plan. Hapo sasa Bwana anataka kuanzisha mchakato wake, mpango wake. His redemptive plan Mpa- for mankind. Mpango wake wa ukombozi kwa ajili ya binadamu. So turn with me blessed people. Hivyo geuka pamoja nami watu wabarikiwa. To the book of Leviticus. Kwenye kitabu cha mambo ya Walawi. Leviticus chapter 8. Mambo ya Walawi sura ya 8. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Yesu ni Bwana. 
Leviticus chapter 8. Mambo ya walau sura ya 8. We are going to read it slowly so you, everybody is on board. Tunaenda kuisoma pole pole ili kwamba kila mmoja awe katika ukurasa mmoja. So after a long time. Baada ya muda mrefu. Of preparation. Ya maandalizi. Of preparing the priest. Ya kuandaa makuhani. Then finally comes the ordination day. Hadimae sasa inakuja siku ya kutawazwa. And inside this entire ordination. Na katika huku kutawazwa kwote. And the sacrificial system. Na ule mtindo wa kutoa dhabihu. That the Lord has set up. Ambao Bwana ameuteua. You will see the lamb of God. Mtamuona mwana kondoo wa Mungu. Christ Jesus the Messiah. Kristo Yesu Masiya. It was a depiction. Ilikuwa dhihirisho. Of Christ the Messiah coming. Ya Kristo Masiya to take away the sin of man. And so I want us to handle this now. As we slowly move into the gravity of standing before the Lord. I first want to introduce God, Yahweh. Leviticus chapter 8. Mambo ya walawi sura ya 8 from verse 1 to 36 kwanza hadi 36 The Lord said to Moses Bwana akamwambia Musa Bring Aaron and his sons Lete Aaron na wanawe their garments mavazi yao the anointing oil mafuta ya upako the bull for the sin offering fahali kwa ajili ya sadaka ya dhambi the two rams kondoo wa ume wawili and the basket containing bread na kikapu chenye mikate made without yeast iliyotengenezwa bila chachu and gather the entire assembly at the entrance of the tent of meeting kisha kusanya mkutano wote kwenye ingilio la hema la kukutania verse 4 mstari wa moses did as the lord commanded him musa akafanya kama bwana alivyomwagiza and the assembly gathered at the entrance to the tent of meeting kutano ukakusanyika kwenye ingilio la hema la kukutania mstari wa 5 Moses say to the assembly Musa akaliambia kusanyiko This is what the Lord the God of Israel has commanded to be done Hili ndilo Bwana Bwana wa Mungu wa Israeli aloagiza lifanyika Then Moses brought Aaron and his sons Kisha Musa akamleta Aaron pamoja na wanawe forward mbele and washed them with water akawaosha kwa maji He put the tunic on Aaron. Akamvika Aaron koti. And tied the sash around him. Akamfunga mshipi. And clothed him with a robe. Akamvika joho. And put the ephod on him. Na kumvalisha kizibao. And he also fastened the ephod with a decorative waistband. Pia akafunga kizibao juu yake na kukifunga katika kiuno chake. Which he tied around him. Ambaye alifunga mshipi juu yake. Verse 8. Mstari wa 8. He placed the breast plate on him. Akaweka, the breast piece on him. Akaweka kifuko cha kifuani juu yake. And he put the urim and thumim. Na kuweka urimu na thumimu in the breast piece. Kwenye hicho kifuko. Verse 9. Mstari wa 9. Then he placed the turban on Aaron's head. Kisha akamvika Aaron kilemba kichoni pake. And he set the gold plate. Akaweka lile bamba la dhahabu. The sacred emblem on the front of it. Lile taji takatifu upande wa mbele. As the Lord commanded Moses. Kama Bwana alivyomwagiza Musa. Verse 10. Mstari wa kumi. Then Moses took the anointing oil. Ndipo Musa akachukua mafuta ya upako. And anointed the tabernacle. Na kuipaka maskani. And everything in it. Na kila kitu kilichokuwa hapo ndani yake. And so consecrated them. Kisha hivyo basi akaviweka wakfu. Verse 11. Mstari wa 11. He sprinkled some of the oil on the altar seven times. Akanyunyiza baadhi ya mafuta juu ya madhabahu mara saba. Anointing the altar akipaka madhabahu mafuta and all the utensils na vyombo vyake vyote and the basin with his stand pamoja na sinia na kinara chake to consecrate them ili kuviweka wakfu verse 12 mstari wa 12 he poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head 
akamimina sehemu ya haya mafuta ya upako kichwani mwa Aruni and anointed him to consecrate him na akamtia mafuta ili kumweka wakfu then he brought Aaron's sons forward kisha akawaleta wana wa Aruni mbele and put the tunics on them akawavika makoti and tied the sashes around them akawafunga mishipi and fastened caps on them na kuwavika vilembe as the lord commanded Moses. kama vile bwana alivyomwagiza Musa verse 14 Stari wa 14. He then presented the bull for the sin offering. Kisha akamtoa fahali kwa ajili ya sadaka ya dhambi. And Aaron and his sons laid their hands on his head. Nao Aruni na wanawe wakaweka mikono juu ya vichwa vyake. Verse 15. Mstari wa 15. Moses slaughtered the bull. Musa akamchinja yule fahali. And took some of the blood. Na kuchukua sehemu ya hiyo damu. With his fingers kwa kidole chake and put it in all the horns of the altar akaita akaitia kwenye pembe zote za madhabahu to purify the altar ili kuitakasa madhabahu pour the rest of the blood at the base of the altar akaimwaga damu iliyobaki chini ya madhabahu remember kumbuka all this is describing what the messiah is coming to do hii yote inaelezea kila ambacho Masiya anakuja kufanya that you may understand ili mpate kuelewa the gravity of approaching the lord uzito wa kumwendea bwana and standing before the lord na kusimama mbele za it is not a joke sio mchezo it is not a joke sio mzaha and he says na anasema the rest of the blood to the base of the altar kwa hiyo akaimwaga damu iliyobaki chini ya madhabahu so he consecrated it kwa hiyo akaiweka wakfu to make atonement for it ili kufanya upatanisho kwa ajili ya hiyo madhabahu verse 16 mstari wa 16 moses also took all the fat around the internal organs pia musa akachukua mafuta yote yanayozunguka sehemu za dani and the long lobe of the liver na mafuta yanayofunika ini and both kidneys na figo zote mbili and they are fat na mafuta yake and he burnt it on the altar na kuyeteketeza juu ya madhabahu verse 17 mstari wa 17 but the bull lakini fahali with his hide pamoja na ngozi yake and his flesh na nyama yake and his intestines na sehemu zake za mifugo he burnt them outside the camp akayeteketeza nje ya kambi as the lord commanded kama bwana alivyomwagiza verse 18 Stari wa 18. Then he presented the ram for the burnt offering. Kisha Musa akamleta kondoo dume kwa ajili ya sadaka kuteketezwa. And Aaron and his sons. Aruni na wanawe. They laid their hands on his head. Wakaweka mikono yao juu ya kichwa chake. Verse 19. Stari wa 19. Moses Lord cut the ram. Musa akamchinja huyo kondoo dume. And splash the blood. Na kunyunyiza damu. Against the sides of the altar. Pande zote za ile madhabahu. Verse 20. He cut the ram into pieces. Akamkata yule kondoo dume vipande vipande. And burn the head. Na kuiteketeza kichwa. And the pieces and the fat. Na vile vipande vipande na yale mafuta. Verse 21. Mstari wa 21. He washed the internal organs. Kisha akasafisha sehemu za ndani. And the legs. Na miguu. With water. Kwa maji. And he burned the whole ram on the altar. Na kumteketeza yule kondoo dume mzima juu ya madhabahu. It was burned it was a burnt offering ilikuwa the sadaka ya kuteketezwa a pleasing aroma harufu nzuri a food offering presented unto the lord sadaka iliyotolewa kwa ajili ya bwana as the lord had commanded moses kama vile bwana alikuwa amemwagiza musa verse 22 mstari wa 22 he then presented the other ram kisha akaleta kondoo dume mwingine the ram for the ordination ndiye kondoo dume kwa ajili ya kuweka wakfu and Aaron and his sons laid their hands on his head Aruni na wanawe wakaweka mikono juu ya kichwa chake Moses Lord had the ram Musa akamchinja yule kondoo dume and took some of the blood na kuchukua sehemu ya damu yake and put it on the lobes of Aaron's right ear na kuipaka juu ya nsha ya sikio la kuume la Aruni and on the thumb of his right hand na juu ya kidole gumba cha mkono wa kuume wa Aruni and on the big toe of his right foot na juu ya kidole kikubwa cha mguu wa kuume Moses also brought Aaron's sons forward pia Musa akawaleta hao wana wa Aruni mbele and put some of the blood on the lobes of their right ears na kuipaka sehemu ya hiyo damu kwenye nsha za masikio yao ya kuume the thumbs of their right hand juu ya vidole gumba vya mikono yao ya kuume big toe of their right feet 
na juu ya vidole vikubwa vya miguu yao ya kiume then he splashed the blood against the sides of the altar kisha akanyonyeza damu pande zote za madhabahu after that he took the he took the fat baada ya hiyo akachukua mafuta and the fat tail na mafuta ya mkia and all the fat around the internal organs na mafuta yote yanayozunguka sehemu za ndani and the long lobe of the liver na mafuta yanayofunika ini both kidneys and their fat figo zote mbili pamoja na mafuta ya and the right thigh na paja la kulia and from the basket of bread kisha kutoka kwenye kikapu cha mikate made without yeast iliyotengenezwa bila chacho which was before the lord kilichokuwa mbele za bwana He took a thick loaf. Akachukua andazi moja. The thick loaf with olive oil mixed in it. Akachukua mkate na nyingine ikiwa imetiwa mafuta ya zaituni. And one thin loaf, thin loaf. Na mkate mwingine mwembamba. And he put this in the fat portion na, on the fat portion on top. Na akaviweka hivi vyote juu ya mafungu ya mafuta ya nyama juu yake. And on the right thigh. Na katika paja la kulia. And he put all these in the hands of Aaron. Na akaviweka hivi vyote mikononi mwa Aaron. And his sons. Na wanawe. And they waved them before the Lord. Na kuviinua mbele za Bwana. As a wave offering. Kwa sadaka ya kuinuliwa. Mstari wa 28. Then Moses took them from their hands. Kisha Musa akavichukua kutoka mikononi mwao. And burn them on the altar. Na kuvitengeneza juu ya madhabahu. On top of the burnt offering. Ya sadaka ya kuteketezwa. As an ordination offering. Kwa sadaka ya kuwekwa wakfu. A pleasing aroma. Harufu nzuri ya kupendeza. A food offering presented unto the Lord. Sadaka iliyotolewa kwa Bwana kwa moto. Verse 29. Mstari wa 29. Moses also took the breast. Kisha Musa akachukua kidari. Which was his share of the ordination ram kilicho fungu la Musa la kondodume and he waved it before the lord na akainua mbele za bwana as a wave offering kama sadaka ya kuinuliwa as the lord commanded kama bwana alivyomwagiza Musa then moses took some of the anointing oil kisha Musa akachukua sehemu ya mafuta ya upako some of the blood from the altar na sehemu ya damu kutoka kwenye madhabahu and sprinkled them on aaron na kuvinyunyiza juu ya aruni and on his garments na mavazi yake and his son na juu ya wanawe and their garments na mavazi yao and so he calls a created aaron kwa hivyo akamweka aruni wako and his garments na mavazi yake and his son pamoja na their garments he is preparing them to stand before the lord anaenda ili kusimama mbele za bwana all this haya yote was to prepare them ilikuwa ya kuanda to be able to stand ili kuweza kusimama before the lord of hosts mbele za bwana wa majeshi what a serious thing ni jambo la kumaanisha namna gani to stand before the lord kusimama mbele za bwana i deliberately wanted to pursue you through this kimsingi nilitaka kuwapitisha kwa hili to underscore to you ili kwamba kuadhibitishia to weigh in on you ili kwamba kuwaletea uzito to deposit this in your heart ili kwamba kuwekeza hili katika mioyo yenu the weight and the gravity U- of standing before the lord of hosts ule uzito wa kusimama mbele za bwana wa majeshi look at the preparation tazameni maandalizi is it a joke je ni mchezo does it seem to you like a joke je ya kuonekania mchezo being prepared kuandaliwa that you may be able to stand before the lord ili upate kusimama mbele za bwana and all this na haya yote essentially be speaking what the messiah would come and prepare you as so you may be able to come and stand before yahweh kimsingi ikizungumzia oh. kuhusiana na jinsi ambavyo masia atakuja na kukuandaa wewe ili kwamba upate kusimama mbele za yahweh that the messiah also would prepare you in like manner exact ya kwamba masia pia atakuandaa wewe kama njia hii and taking some blood mixed with oil na kuchukua damu fulani iliyochanganywa na mafuta and touch touch is right here 
na kuguza kuguza sikio lake la kuume that he may be able to hear god ili kwamba apate kumsikia mungu that not only hearing god ya kwamba sio tu kumsikia mungu peke yake that he may be able to hear and obey god ya kwamba apate kumsikia na kumtii mungu you remember isaiah 6 verse 10 mkumbuka isaya 6 mstari wa 10 when he said go unto these people Wakati... make their ears dull wakati aliposema kwamba enenda kwa watu hawa ukawafanya masikio yao yasisikie he said touch on the right the thumb of the right hand na akasema kwamba guza na kidole gumba ya mkono wa kuume that with this hand you serve the lord ya kwamba kwa mkono huu utamtumikia bwana it will be quick to serve god itakuwa haraka kumtumikia mungu and touch on the thumb the the, 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 the larger foot the, the larger toe of the right leg na uguze katika kidole kikubwa cha mkono na ataguza katika kidole kikubwa cha mguu wa kuume tell him you be quick to go and serve quick to be sent na, quick to respond quick to agree to the call na kumwambia kwamba utakuwa wa haraka kwenda kutumika kwenda kutii kwenda kusikiliza kwenda kumtumikia Mungu i just wanted to pass you through this nilitaka tu kuwapitisha hili As we begin this sermon. Wakati tunaanza haya mahubiri. That you may understand. Ili mpate kuelewa. The gravity of standing before the Lord when I saw the church standing before the Lord inside heaven. It is not a joke. Ili mpate kuelewa uzito wa kusimama mbele za Bwana wakati ambapo niliona kanisa likiwa limesimama mbele za Bwana ndani ya mbingu sio mchezo. This is what Jesus would come to do and to the church that he may prepare her also to be able to stand before Yahweh. Hiki ndicho Yesu alikuwa anakuja kufanya kwa kanisa ili kwamba apate kumwandaa kusimama mbele za Yahweh. Does it sound to you like a joke to stand before the Lord? Je, hii ya kuonekania kama mchezo kusimama mbele za Bwana? Hey. Hey. And after that. Na baada ya hiyo, I also want to talk to you about the throne of God. Pia nataka kuwazungumzia kuhusiana na enzi ya Mungu. That you may put them together. Ili kwamba mpate kuiweka pamoja. And I understand it is not a joke. Na, it is a serious calling, a high calling to come approach and stand before the Lord. Na kuelewa ya kwamba sio mchezo, ni mwito wa juu kabisa, ni mwito wa ngazi ya juu kabisa kuja kusimama mbele za Bwana. It is not a joke. Sio mchezo. You see what they are going through. Mwaona kile ambacho wanapitia? It is tremendous. Ni ajabu kabisa. And he says. Na anasema verse 30. Mstari wa 30. Leviticus 8. Mambo ya walawi sura ya 8. And he says. Anasema then it took some of the anointing oil kisha Musa akachukua sehemu ya mafuta ya upako some of the blood na sehemu ya damu from the altar kutoka kwenye madhabahu and sprinkle them on Aaron na kuvinyunyiza juu ya Aroni and his garment na mavazi yake can you turn with, with me to revelation chapter 7 for a moment geuka pamoja nami kwenye kitabu cha ufunuo sura ya saba kwa kitambo kidogo revelation chapter 7 ufunuo sura ya saba i'm reading 13:14 Ninasoma mstari wa 13 na 14. He says. Anasema, then one of the elders asked me. Kisha mmoja wa wale wazee 24 akaniuliza. These ones in white robes. Hawa waliovaa mavazi meupe. Who are they? Ni nani hawa? And where did they come from? Na wametoka wapi? That time they are standing before the throne. Wakati huo wamesimama kati mbele ya enzi. And he says verse 14. Na anasema mstari wa 14. I answered, "Sir, you know." Nikamjibu, "Bwana, wewe wajua." And he said, "Naye akasema, These, they are the ones, they are they who have come out of the great tribulation." Hawa ni wale waliotoka katika ile dhikiku. And they have washed their robes. Na wamefua mavazi yao. And made them white. Na kuifanya meupe. In the blood of the lamb. Katika damu ya mwana kondoo. You understand why he took the blood mixed with oil and he began now to sprinkle on Aaron and his garment. Je, sasa mwaelewa kwa nini alichukua damu iliyokuwa imechanganywa na mafuta akaanza kumnyonyezea Aroni pamoja na mavazi yake? The book of Hebrews chapter 9. Kitabu cha Waebrania sura ya 9. Preparing them kuanda to appear before the Lord. Kwa ajili ya kusimama mbele za Bwana. Preparing them to stand before Yahweh. Kuanda kwa ajili ya kusimama mbele za Yahweh. He takes the blood he mixes with oil. Anachukua damu na kuichanganya na mafuta. And he sprinkles on Aaron. Na 
vya Aruni and on his garment pamoja na mavazi yake to cleanse him ili kumsafisha to prepare him ili kumwanda and all this system here was by design by the lord na mtindo huu wote ulikuwa kwa ajili ya mpango na bwana to bring to you ili kuwaletea the foreshadow kiashiria of what the messiah would come and do to prepare the church to stand before the lord ya kile ambacho masia using his own blood ya kile ambacho masia atakuja na kufanya ili kuandaa kanisa kusimama mbele za bwana akitumia damu yake mwenyewe The book of Hebrews 9:22 blessed people. Kitabu cha Hebrews sura ya 9 mstari wa 22 watu wabarikiwa. He says in fact. Anasema hata hivyo. The law requires. Sheria hudai kwamba that nearly everything. Kwamba karibu kila kwa damu. And without the shedding of blood. Wala pasipo kumwaga damu. There is no forgiveness. Hakuna msamaha wa dhambi. So are you beginning to understand the preparation? Hivyo basi je, mnaanza kuelewa hayo maandalizi? Aaron is being prepared with his sons. Aruni anaandaliwa pamoja na wanawe. Because very soon in chapter 9 of Leviticus, you see Aaron approach and stand before the Lord. Kwa sababu hivi karibuni kwenye kitabu cha Mambo ya Wanawe. The next chapter katika kitabu cha mambo ya walawi sura ya tisa unamwona Aruni akija na kusimama mbele za Bwana. Why has this generation trivialized standing before the Lord? Ni kwa nini kizazi hiki kimeshusha na kudunisha kabisa kusimama mbele za Bwana? Why have you slighted it, slighting it, ni, making it a slight thing? Ni kwa nini mmeifanya kuwa kitu rahisi, nyepesi? Why have you made it light? Ni kwa nini mmeifanya kuwa kitu raisi? And yet, na ilhali, what the Messiah did for the church. Kile ambacho Masia alifanya kwa ajili ya kanisa. Where is even heavier than what I'm reading now? Ambapo ni mzito kabisa hata kuliko mahali ambapo ninasoma. Because so, right now we are dealing with the blood of animals. Kwa sababu sasa hivi tunashughulika na damu ya wanyama. But what he did for the church using this protocol? Lakini kile ambacho alifanya na kanisa kutumia mpango huu was by using the blood of the son of the living god himself ilikuwa kwa kutumia damu ya mwana wa mungu aliye hai mwenyewe the blood of the king of righteousness damu ya mfalme wa uhaki the blood of the king of glory damu ya mfalme wa utukufu the blood of god damu ya mungu god the son mungu mwana the one that stands at the center of the throne and is worshiped at the center of power yeah. by every creation ye ambaye anasimama katika enzi katikati ya enzi na ye anaabudiwa na viumbe wote katika enzi ya nguvu Do you really understand the gravity of standing before the Lord the way Joshua did Je It is not a joke Je kwa kweli mnaelewa ule uzito wa kusimama mbele za Bwana kama vile Yeshua alivyofanya sio mbele. Every time you go to church kila wakati unapokwenda kanisa Do you really understand the gravity of standing before the Lord? Je, kwa kweli unaelewa ule uzito wa kusimama mbele za Bwana? Because I have seen the ultimate. Kwa sababu nimeona kilele chake. When finally the church is standing before the throne of God inside heaven wakati ambapo hatimaye kanisa litakuwa limesimama katika enzi ya Mungu ndani ya mbingu and you cannot say na kamwe hauwezi kusema that oh now i'm taking it a bit light ya kwamba oh sasa ninaichukulia kwa uraisi but when that day comes i'll take it seriously lakini hiyo siku itakapotimia nitaichukulia kwa kumaanisha those people i saw inside heaven standing before the throne of god hao watu ambao niliwaona ndani ya mbingu wakiwa wamesimama mbele ya enzi ya Mungu they already did the same graphic on the earth in the church tayari walifanya vivyo na uzito huo huo katika dunia katika kanisa and he say na anasema that standing before the lord is not a joke ya kwamba kusimama mbele za bwana sio mzaha we are going to see the greater depth of everything here tonight tunaenda kuona vilindi vya zaidi katika kila kitu usiku wa leo because kwa sababu this is the priestly king he huyo ni mfalme wa kikuhani so kwa hivyo You are appearing before the high priest. Unakuja kusimama mbele ya kuhani mkuu. The next moment. Wakati unaofuata. You are appearing before the king. Unasimama mbele za mfalme. So it's not a joke. Hivyo basi sio mchezo. And he prepared the church. Naye akaandaa kanisa. Using his own blood. Akitumia damu yake. But when you take 
the gravity of the blood of the earth yeah. as your feet are leading you to the altar in the church ya yeah, kwamba wakati utakapochukua ule uzito wa damu ya Yesu wakati ambapo miguu yako inakuongoza na kukupeleka katika madhabahu kanisani so will those feet with the same gravity lead you to the throne in heaven and worship Yahweh hallelujah Ndivyo ambavyo miguu hiyo na uzito huo huo utakuongoza hadi katika ufalme ya Yahweh kwenda kuabudu mbele ya Yahweh. If your feet have not been used to leading you to the house of the Lord while you on the earth. Iwapo miguu yako haikuzoelea kukuongoza kukupeleka katika nyumba ya Bwana ukiwa hapa duniani. There is no way on that day you say now they will lead you into the kingdom of glory. Hakuna vile katika hiyo siku siku maalum kabisa utasemea kwamba sasa zita ngoza kukupeleka katika ufalme wa utukufu. The whole earth is tuned in here today. Ulimwengu wote uko hapa unasikiliza leo hii. Do you understand how this generation has trivialized the worshiping of Jehovah? Je, mnaelewa jinsi ambavyo hiki kizazi kimeifanya rahisi na wepesi kabisa? And that's why the Lord is restoring back the fear of God. Ndio sababu Bwana anarejesha tena hofu ya Mungu. He's saying the biggest problem of this age Ana... is lack of the fear of God. Anasema kwamba shida kubwa kabisa ya wakati huu ni ukosefu wa hofu ya Mungu. The biggest problem of this generation is lack of reverence unto God, reverence which is due him. Shida kubwa kabisa ya hiki kizazi hiki kwa wakati huu ni ukosefu wa heshima ya Mungu ambaye anastahili yeye. Reverence belongs to the Lord. And the Lord is saying, you cannot say that when I'm here, I'm not very much reverent. But when I get there, I'll be reverent. He's saying, if your feet have not taught you, have not learned to be bringing you into the church, there is no way on that day they will now lead you to the kingdom of glory. So the reverence the fear of God that is due standing before the Lord begins right here. And that is where everybody, every Christian has faulted the Lord now. Everybody has failed the Lord there. They walk into the church. This high Jesus blessed me today. Ati hai Jesus bless me today. Wanasema hai Yesu nibariki leo hii. Pocketing. Wakiwa meka mikono yao kwa mifuko. Where is the reverence unto the Lord? Je, iwapi heshima ya Bwana? When the grace came. Wakati neema ilipokuja. Did it mean that God is not holy anymore? Je, ilimaanisha kwamba Mungu tena sio mtakatifu? Absolutely not. Hapana kabisa. Did it mean that there is no reverence due him anymore? Je, ilimaanisha kwamba sasa hakuna heshima anayostahili? Absolutely not. Hapana kabisa. And so, kwa hivyo, he is sprinkling blood on him, preparing him. Ananyunyiza damu juu yake akimwandaa. They are doing things unto him. Wanamfanyia vitu. Because they know. Kwa sababu wanajua. Very soon. Hivi karibuni. In Leviticus chapter 9. Kwenye mambo ya walawi sura ya 9. He's going to have to stand finally stand before the Lord. Hatimaye anaenda kusimama mbele za Bwana. Has this generation prepared adequately to come stand before the Lord? Je, hiki kizazi kimejiandaa ipasavyo kuja kusimama mbele za Bwana? Have you feared the Lord? Je, umemuofu Mungu? And then you see now. Halafu unaona sasa. The book of Psalm 45. Kitabu cha Zaburi 45. Leviticus 8:35 first and then Psalm 45. Mambo ya Walawi 8:35 kwanza halafu Zaburi 35. Leviticus 8:35. Mambo ya Walawi 8:35. He says here. Anasema hapa. We can just run down. Let's read from 30 and run down. Wacha tusome kuanzia 30 na tuende kote kote. Then Moses took some of the anointing oil. Kisha Musa akachukua sehemu ya mafuta ya upate. Some of the blood. Na sehemu ya damu. From the altar. Kutoka kwenye madhabahu. And sprinkle them on Aaron. Na kuvinyunyiza juu ya Aruni. And on his garments. Na mavazi yake. And on his son. Na juu ya wanawe. And their garments. Na mavazi yao. So he consecrated Aaron. Kwa hiyo akamweka Aruni wakfu. And his son. Pamoja na wanawe. Again, so he consecrated Aaron and his garments, his sons and their garments. Kwa hiyo akamweka Aruni 
pamoja na mavazi yake wakfu pamoja na wanawe na mavazi yao wakfu Moses then said to Aaron Kisha Musa akamwambia Aaroni and his sons na wanawe cook the meat at the entrance of the tent of meeting Pika hiyo nyama kwenye ingilio la hema ya kukutania and eat it there with bread from the basket na uile hapo pamoja na mkate kutoka kwenye kikapu of ordination offering cha sadaka ya kuwekwa wakfu as i was commanded kama nilivyoagizwa Aaron and his sons are to eat it Aruni na wanawe wataila 32 verse 32 mstari wa 32 then burn up the rest of the meat kisha teketeza nyama iliyosalia and the bread na mikate verse 33 mstari wa 33 do not leave the entrance of the tent of meeting sitoke kwenye ingilio la hema la kukutania for seven days kwa muda wa siku saba until the day of your ordination is completed mpaka siku zenu za kuwekwa wakfu ziwe zimetimia for your ordination will last seven days kwa kuwa muda wenu wa kuwekwa wakfu utakuwa siku saba what has been done today lili lilofanywa leo was commanded by the lord yahweh niliagizwa na bwana yahweh to make atonement for you ili kufanya upatanisho kwa ajili yenu that yemo. after all that procedure ya kwamba baada ya hatua hiyo Again now. Tena, they are required to remain at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Wanaagizwa wasalia katika ingilio la hema la kukutania. For a whole seven days. Kwa siku saba zote. That commemorates. Ambaye ni kumbukumbu. And marks. Na kutia alama. And highlights. Na kuinua juu kabisa. Their separation from the world. Kujitenga kwao kutoka kwa ulimwengu. These guys Hawa watu are about to appear before the Lord. Wako karibu kusimama mbele za Bwana. They are about to come and stand before the Lord Yahweh. Wako karibu kuja na kusimama mbele za Bwana Yahweh. And the gravity of that process, that process of going to stand of that standing before the Lord. Na ule uzito wa mchakato huo hatua hiyo ya kwenda kusimama mbele za Bwana. Is that why they are being processed? They are being prepared. Nothing is being left to chance ndio sababu wanapitishwa katika hatua hiyo wanaandaliwa hakuna kitu kinawashwa kabisa and so they have to stay at the entrance and they have to eat the meat there and they have to stay there seven days just familiarizing themselves with the protocols of god the house of god identifying themselves the house of the lord separating on god's side <laughs> hallelujah hivyo basi ni lazima wasalie katika ingilio hilo la hema na pia kukula for seven nyuma. days kwa siku saba they cannot leave hawawezi kuondoka they have to remain at the entrance lazima wabakie katika ingilio as a sign of the fact that now on they are, when they have been washed with this blood from now on they are now separated unto the lord kama ishara kwamba sasa kwamba wameoshwa na, na damu hiyo kuanzia leo kuendelea wametengwa kwa ajili ya bwana a holy priesthood ukuhani mtakatifu a holy nation taifa takatifu a people set apart unto the lord watu waliotengwa kwa ajili ya bwana and when you look at the taban na ukiangalia kila kilemba then he put the plate the golden plate alafu akaweka kizibao cha dhahabu that says ambacho kinasema set apart aliyetengwa unto the lord that says ambaye inasema holy mtakatifu unto the lord kwa ajili ya bwana that says ambaye inasema the lord is holy bwana ni mtakatifu and you are separated on his side na yeye amejitenga kwa ajili ya upande wake and you are se- and you are separated on his side na wewe umetengwa kwa upande wake hi hi a modern generation kizazi cha kisasa that has trivialized the blood of Jesus. Ambaye imeifanya rahisi kabisa damu ya Yesu. How heavy are then? Ni uzito namna gani basi? How weighty are then? Ni uzito namna gani basi? To be sprinkled and bathed with the blood of the lamb of God, the holy sacred son of the living God. Kunyonyeziwa na kuoshwa na damu ya mwana kondoo wa Mungu, mwana kondoo mtakatifu wa Mungu aliye hai. The king of glory himself. Mfalme wa utukufu mwenyewe. The blood of God. Damu ya Mungu. Poured on you, sprinkled on you to wash you clean. Ikimwangwa juu yako kukunyunyuzia ili kwamba uosho uwe safi. How much more serious is the separation supposed to be? Ni kumaanisha namna gani hiyo kujitenga yapaswa kuwa? Hai. Hai. And we are targeting 35. Na tuko katika mstari wa 35. And he says. Anasema What has been done today was commanded by the Lord to make atonement for you. 
lile lililofanyika leo liliagizwa na Bwana ili kufanya upatanisho kwa ajili yetu. Verse 35. Mstari wa 35. You must stay at the entrance of the tent of meeting. Lazima mkae kwenye ingilio la hema la kukutania. Day and night. Chana na usiku. For seven days. Kwa siku saba. And do what the Lord requires. Na kufanya lile Bwana analolitaka. So you will not die. Ai! Ili kwamba msife. Do you really understand the gravity of standing before the Lord? Je, kwa kweli mnaelewa ule uzito wa kusimama mbele za Bwana? He's saying. Anasema. That even with all this now. Ya kwamba hata na hii yote sasa. Washed by the blood. Akiwa ameoshwa kwa damu. Even the garment of righteousness. Wamepewa vazi la uhaki. Cleansed from the sin. Wamesafishwa kutoka kwa dhambi. They must now be separated. Sasa lazima watengwe. To maintain the sanctity of their consecration. Ili kudumisha ule utakaso wao kuweko wakfu. Why? Kwa nini? Otherwise they will die when they appear before God. They will die you kill them. Hey. Did you know that that is the same Jehovah you worship? That otherwise the Lord will kill them and they will die. Hey. And he says so you will not die for that is what the Lord has commanded. Did you understand blessed people? Preparing a people. Preparing a church. Preparing somebody. Preparing a generation to appear before the Lord. And all this was a mere foreshadowing of what Jesus would do at the Calvary cross on Calvary to be able to wash you with the blood of God the blood of God the Son that you may be able to be bona fide acceptable to stand before the Lord otherwise he kill you did you understand? Why has this generation trivialized worship? You made worship look like nothing. Why? And that's why the kingdom of God is near. The Lord has spoken with me about the coming of the Messiah. I have seen the Messiah coming. I've seen the glorious church taken up. Let us now move now to chapter 9 of Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 9. And you see now the inauguration of what Jesus was coming to do at Calvary. Wacha tuende sasa kwenye kitabu cha mambo ya Walawi sura ya tisa Sasa unaona kule kuzinduliwa. Ndio muone. Ndio muone kule kuzinduliwa kwa kile ambacho Yesu alikuwa failing the opening up now of when now you that have been washed are supposed to come and stand before the Lord. Na muone kule kufunuliwa ambapo sasa ninyi ambao mmeoshwa mpate kuja na kusimama mbele za Bwana. Everything here was a foreshadow. It was centered on the blood of the Messiah. Hallelujah. Kila kitu hapa kilikuwa kiashiria ili uwekwe kati katika damu ya Yesu. The blood of Jesus is at the center of this entire redemptive process. Damu ya Yesu iko katika shina la kati la hatua hii ya ukombozi yote. And yes indeed. Na ndio kwa kweli. Even today it is true. Hata leo hii ni kweli. You are going to see later. Mnaenda kuona hapo baadaye. That when Ananias and Sapphira also appeared when they were not ready, they died. Yeah, he killed them. Hallelujah. Ya yeah, kwamba wakati They died. Ya yeah, kwamba wakati We are going to see much later. Ya kwamba hapo baadaye mnaenda kuona wakati ambapo Anania na Safira walipokuja mbele za Bwana wakiwa hawa They came to stand before the Lord. Walikuja kusimama mbele za Bwana. And they were not ready. Na wao hawakuwa tayari. In the New Testament church. Katika kanisa la Agano. And he killed them. Naye akawaua. He struck them down. So it's important that just have fast forwarded. But for now let us go to verse 9, chapter 9 Leviticus. Hivyo ni muhimu niwasogeshe tuko mbele lakini sasa wacha tuende kwa mambo ya Walawi sura ya 9. When he gives those commands that you stay here 
You separate out. Otherwise God will kill you when you try to go before him. For seven days. At the tent of meeting. At the entrance. And separate out. Preparing yourself. To go and stand before the Lord. Otherwise he will kill you. It applies to the church. Because Ananias and Sapphira tried. And he killed them. We are going to see that. But let's first go to Leviticus chapter 9. Preparing our people. Aaron has now been prepared. With his son. They have now been prepared. To go stand before the Lord. Can we go to Leviticus 9 and see how they stand before the Lord now? They are now ready. They have been washed by the blood. Now the blood of the ram. Together with the with the oil, the anointing oil. The sacred anointing oil. Mixed with it. Has been sprinkled on them. And has been sprinkled on their garments. In fact, everybody, everything requires. In fact, everybody requires. In fact, everybody requires. The sprinkling of the blood. Without the sprinkling of the blood. There is no cleansing of sin. There is no forgiveness of sin. There is no redemption. There is no salvation. Hallelujah. It is the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To a generation that has trivialized the blood of Jesus. What an awesome conversation. Let's quickly run through Leviticus chapter 9 because now they have been prepared and let us see how they come before the Lord. How they stand before the Lord. Standing before the Lord. After we read it, the whole chapter, then we'll take a short break, come back, and now handle the standing before the Lord. The gravitas to you. The gravity to you, the church. After seven days of separation, Leviticus chapter 9 verse 1, on the eighth day, Moses summoned Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. And he said to Aaron, Take a bull calf for your sin offering and a ram for your burnt offering both without defect and present them before the Lord. Then say to the Israelites take a male goat for a sin offering a calf and a lamb both a year old without defect for a burnt offering and an ox and a ram for fellowship offerings to sacrifice before the Lord together with a grain offering mixed with olive oil for today the Lord will appear to you Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Standing before the Lord. How do you prepare a people that have rejected the blood of Jesus and they have moved to a modern gospel? How do you prepare a generation that is postmodern and thrown the cross out of the church and thrown the cross out of their lives? How do you prepare them to stand before the Lord Yahweh without the blood of Jesus? Hallelujah! 
kusimama mbele za Bwana pasipo damu ya Yesu. Haleluya. Because he says. Kwa sababu anasema. For today. Kwa maana leo hii. The Lord will appear to you. Bwana atakuja kwenu. For today. Kwa maana leo hii. He will visit you. Atawatembelea. If you prepare well. Iwapo mtajiandaa vizuri. He will visit you. Atawatembelea. If you prepare well. Iwapo mtajiandaa vizuri. The cloud is coming to Kisumu. Hallelujah. Kuja. If you prepare well. God is coming. Mungu anakuja. Hey. Hey. How do you prepare people? Je, ni vipi unapata kuandaa watu? To stand before the Lord. Kusimama mbele za Bwana. And he says, Na anasema, They took the things Moses commanded. Wakavileta vile vitu Musa alivyowaagiza. To the front of the tent of meeting. Mbele ya hema la kukutania. And the entire assembly came near. Nalo kusanyiko lote likakaribia. And stood before the Lord. Na kusimama mbele za Bwana. Then Moses said, Ndipo Musa akasema, This is what the Lord has commanded you to do. Hili ndilo Bwana alilowaagiza ninyi mlifanye. That is says. Kisha akasema, So that the glory of the Lord may appear to you. Ili, Ay, so there is a purpose. Ili utukufu wa Bwana upate kuonekana kwenu. Hivyo kunayo makusudi. So there is an objective blessed people. Hivyo kunalo lengo watu wabarikiwa. For going to stand before the Lord. Kwa ajili ya kwenda kusimama mbele za Bwana. That they may be visited by Yahweh. Ya kwamba wapate kutembelewa na Yahweh. The present day church. Kanisa la sasa hivi. Every Sunday. Kila Jumapili. Before the coronavirus. Kabla virusi vya corona. Before the lockdown. Every Sunday whenever you went to the church and appeared before the Lord what was your objective what was the purpose he says the purpose here is that today God may visit you hallelujah and when I prepared you and I said the Lord is coming to visit his servants in Kisumu and they announced it and when they prepared themselves the two prophets of the Lord the Lord come he visited them hallelujah and then the two prophets they stood before the Lord of all the earth Hallelujah. Halafu manabii wawili wakasimama mbele za Bwana wa dunia yote. Hallelujah. Kule kisumu. There is a purpose. Kunayo makusudi. When you go to church. Wakati unapokwenda kanisani. It's not just drama. Sio tu sarakasi. It's not just passing time. Sio tu kupitisha wakati. It is visitation. Ni mtembeleo. When you prepare well. Ukijiandaa vizuri. God will visit you. Mungu atakutembelea. These are the days of the blood and everything is centered on the blood the slaughtering of the animals the sprinkling of the blood the offering of the sacrifice otherwise the Lord will kill you if you are not prepared otherwise you go to hell if you are not prepared those who prepare well those who prepare well I saw them in heaven standing before the Lord and after the rapture they are still standing before the Lord of hosts tonight you must prepare to stand before the Lord what a generation and so now they are ready and Aaron in chapter 9 Leviticus chapter 9 Aaron is now going to stand with his sons going to stand before the Lord but remember the same Aaron and the son They saw the dread of God. The power of God. The might of God. When he struck Egypt with the plagues. 
people. So they have an idea of whom they are going to stand before. Does this generation have any idea whom they are standing before? Remember on Mount Sinai, shaking with an earthquake, trumpets and smoke of fire. He came down on fire. He came down with fire. And they feared. So no, let him never speak to us again. Let him speak to you and then you speak to us. So they have some idea of whom they are preparing to stand before. Does this present day church have any idea of whom they stand before? Of whom they are going to stand before if the lockdown is released? Look at that enormous cloud on your screen right now in Kisumu. Are you aware of whom you are going to stand before? His name is Yahweh. The most terrible God of Israel. I told you tonight is a long sermon because for two days I missed you. I'm loaded with so much I want to give to you to prepare modern people to go and stand before the Lord very honorably with reverence and fear and holiness and righteousness covered by the blood of the land in right standing with Yahweh. So Aaron is preparing now. Verse 5. Leviticus chapter 9. They took the things Moses commanded them to the front of the tent of meeting. And the entire assembly came near and stood before the Lord. Then Moses said, This is what the Lord commanded you to do. So that the glory of the Lord may appear to you. Moses said to Aaron, Come to the altar and sacrifice your sin offering and your burnt offering and make atonement for yourself and the people. Sacrifice the offering that is for the people and make atonement for them as the Lord commanded. Verse 8, Leviticus chapter 9. So Aaron came to the altar and slaughtered the calf as a sin offering for himself. His sons brought out the blood to him and he dipped his finger into the blood and he put it on the horns of the altar the rest of the blood was poured at the base of the altar verse 10 on the altar he burned the fat and the kidneys and the long lobe of the liver from the sin offering as the Lord commanded Moses. The flesh and the hides he burned outside the camp. Verse 12 Then he slaughtered the burnt offering. His sons handed him the blood and he splashed it against the sides of the altar. Then they handed him the burnt offering pieces. Piece by piece. Including the head. And he burnt them on the altar. Verse 14. He washed the internal organs and the legs and burnt them on top of the burnt offering on the altar. Verse 15. Aaron then brought out the offering that was for the people. 
He took the God for the people's sin. For the people's sin offering. And slaughtered it. And he offered it as a sin offering. As he did with the first one. He brought the burnt offering. And offered it on the prescri- in the prescribed way. Verse 17. He also brought the grain offering. And took a handful of it. And burned it on the, on the altar. In addition to the morning. In addition to the morning's burning or burnt offering. In addition, the morning's burnt offering. Verse 18. He slaughtered the ox and the ram as the fellowship offering for the people. And then he says, his sons handed him the blood and he splashes on the sides of the altar. But the fat portions of the ox and the ram and the fat tail and the layer of fat the kidneys and the long lobe of the liver verse 20 this he laid on the breast and then Aaron he burnt the fat on the altar then Aaron waved the breast to the right the breast and the right thigh he waved them before the Lord as a wave offering then Aaron lifted up his hands towards the Lord then Aaron lifted up his hands towards the people Verse 22 now. And he blessed them. Now look at this now. It is now the Lord blessing his people through the ordained priests. Owing to the preparations by the blood in Leviticus chapter 8. And especially the significance of Leviticus chapter 8 verse 30 and verse 35. The sprinkling of the blood. Leviticus 922. Then Aaron lifted his hand towards the people and blessed them. And having sacrificed the sin offering, the burnt offering, and the fellowship offering, he stepped down from the altar. Then look at this now. Moses and Aaron then went up into the tent of meeting when they came out they blessed the people and the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people hallelujah look at verse 24 and the fire came out from the presence of the Lord meaning from the inside where the ark of the covenant is and came out and consumed the burnt offering hallelujah and the portions of the altar and when the people saw this they shouted for joy and they fell face down Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is always a purpose. An objective. A spiritual objective. For going and standing before the Lord. I wonder whether this generation is aware. Every time you've stood before the Lord. And gone away empty handed. Have you really understood the basic principles that were designed and laid in place? For 
for appearing before the Lord. Kwa ajili ya kusimama mbele za Bwana. That there is a purpose. Ya kwamba kuna kusudi. That when you are in right standing before the Lord. Ya kwamba wakati uko katika msimamo sawa mbele Your heart is right. Moyo wako uko sawa. Everything is right. Kila kitu kimesawa. And then you go and stand before the Lord. Halafu unakwenda na kusimama mbele za Bwana. There is a visitation. Kuna mtembeleo. And right now. Na sasa hivi. There is a visitation. Kunao mtembeleo. A creeper is walking today. Kiwete anatembeleo hi. The cloud appeared December 22nd 2019 just a few months ago. Wingu lilishuka tarehe 22 Desemba mwaka 2015 mwaka 2019 miezi michache tu iliyopita. And when the Lord comes in the glory, his cloud, when his cloud came after Aaron and Moses stepped forward, the cloud came na wakati bwana anapokuja katika utukufu wake wingu lilikuja the cloud you see right there now wingu ambalo mnaona sasa hivi pale he say anasema when the cloud comes wakati wingu linapokuja it was an approval ilikuwa dhibitisho god saying yes mungu akisema ndio this is my servant huyu ni mtumishi wangu yes ndio when he calls me wakati anaponita i myself i come mimi mwenyewe ninakuja yes This is my anointed one. Huyo ni mpako wa mafuta wangu. Yes. Ndio. This is my friend. Huyo ni rafiki wangu. Yes. Ndio. My seal of approval is on him. Mhuri wangu wa dhibitisho uko juu yake. Blessed people. Watu wabarikiwa. With that cloud on your screen. Na hilo wingu likiwa katika runinga zenu. I want us to take a short quick break. Ninataka tuchukue kipindi kifupi cha haraka cha mapumziko. Fif- Ten minutes maximum. Dakika 15 kabisa zikienda sana. So we can come back. Ili kwamba tupate kurudi. Then I can now describe to you the present day church how she is standing before the Lord so we can begin the process of correction. Ili kwamba sasa nipate kuwaelezea jinsi ambavyo kanisa la sasa hivi limesimama mbele za Bwana ili tuanze hatua hiyo ya marekebisho. You are going to be shocked. Unaenda kushtuka kabisa. Make sure you call somebody tell them to tune in. Hakikisha kwamba unampigia mtu simu mwambie kwamba sikilize. On this Friday night. Katika usiku huo Ijumaa. It's very powerful here. Ni nguvu kabisa hapa. Because kwa sababu I have already seen the church standing before the Lord. Tayari nimeliona kanisa likiwa limesimama mbele za Bwana. Inside heaven. Ndani ya mbingu. And it's going to happen soon. Na inaenda kutendeka hivi karibuni. So this instruction. Hivyo basi haya maagizo. From the Lord Yahweh the God of Israel. Kutoka kwa Bwana Yahweh Mungu wa This fundamental. Ni muhimu. So see you in 15 minutes. Hivi nitawaona katika dakika 15. At exactly quarter to midnight I'm on the altar at the altar here. Ikigonga tu sa Thank you God shalom. Asante ni toda shalom. Enter the blood. Hivyo watu wabarikiwa. Welcome back to our evening service. Karibuni tena katika ibada yetu ya jioni. So we have seen Hivyo tumeona that there is a procedure. Ya kwamba kunayo hatua. There's an entire process. Kunayo hatua yote mzima. A detailed process. Ya hatua iliyo na maelezo zaidi. That God the Father himself planned. Ambayo Bwana Mbaba mwenyewe aliipanga. And designed it na kisha akaipanga and set it na kisha akaiweka for the redemption of man the cleansing of man by blood kwa ajili ya ukombozo wa wanadamu kuoshwa kwa wanadamu kwa damu and that this detailed process you Hal- see here halafu na hii hatua ambayo ina vipengele sana ambayo mnaona hapa that this process that has details here ya kwamba huu mchakato ambao una maelezo mengi this process huu mchakato is essentially for a shadowing what the enormous blood of Jesus would do in Kim, the life of man. Kimsingi inaashiria kile ambacho damu ya Yesu itafanya katika maisha ya mwanadamu. And that's why. Ndio sababu. This is a setting time. This is such a, 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 a clock setting moment for the church. Huni wakati nyeti kabisa kwa kanisa. And he say. Na anasema that after preparing Aaron and his son. Ya kwamba baada ya kuandaa Aaron pamoja na wanawe Then now they are ready to go. Hapo sasa wako tayari kwenda. And go and stand before the Lord. Kwenda na kusimama mbele za Bwana. And there is such enormity and gravity. Na kuna uzito mkubwa kabisa na unyeti. To go and stand before the Lord of hosts. Kwenda na kusimama mbele za Bwana wa majeshi. And when there is stand before the Lord of hosts. Na wanaposimama mbele za Bwana wa majeshi. And there is stand well. 
na wanasimama ipasavyo then you see that the lord accepts their sacrifice hapo basi unaona ya kwamba bwana anakubali dhabihu yao and when the lord accepts their sacrifice na wakati bwana anapokubali dhabihu yao then you see the lord himself appear in his cloud alafu unaona bwana mwenyewe akija katika wingu lake it's a beautiful thing ni jambo la kupendeza kabisa for god the father kwa Bwana Mungu himself to come to his prophet yeye mwenyewe kuja kwa manabii wake to affirm kudhibitisha and confirm na kudhibitisha and establish to the earth na kuhakikishia ulimwengu and the angels in heaven na malaika walio juu mbinguni and the total universe na ulimwengu wote mzima that this is my servant ya kwamba Hawan ni watumishi wangu. It's a very beautiful thing that this is being spoken at a time when this visitation is on. Ni jambo la kupendeza kabisa ya kwamba haya yanazungumzwa wakati ambapo mtembeleo huu unaendelea. It's at the time when this visitation is on. Wakati ambapo mtembeleo huu upo. And we see. Na tunaona that there is a process. Ya kwamba kunayo hatua that one goes through ambayo mtu anapitia when they are being washed by the blood wakati ambapo wanaoshwa kwa damu put it better wacha niweke vyema that there is a process ya kwamba kunayo hatua that the church that one goes through ambayo kanisa ambayo mtu anapitia when the blood of jesus wakati damu ya yesu is preparing them to go stand before the lord napowaandaa kwenda kusimama mbele za bwana and right now na sasa hivi i want to step wise ninataka hatua kwa hatua begin to walk with you because i'm not sure about tomorrow normally when we have long sessions like this the next day we don't have a church service so i want to maximize i want to do maximum gains for now ninataka kwanza kutembea pamoja nanyi hatua kwa hatua kwa sababu hapo kesho sijui kuhusiana na kesho once we do it so long like this then tomorrow we will rest and do it on sunday so let us make gains wa mara tu tunafanya ndefu namna hii hapo kesho tutapumzika halafu tuendelee anasema that there is a procedure a process ya kwamba kunayo mchakato hatua and that process na hatua hiyo prepares man inamwandaa mwanadamu fallen man that fell in the garden mwanadamu alianguka yeye alianguka katika bustani and god decided na mungu akaamua that the inaugural day ya kwamba siku ya kuzinduliwa the starting day the launching day siku ya uzinduzi siku ya when he would launch the redemption of jesus wa, the redemption that jesus would bring to the earth that that was the day ya kwamba atakapoanzisha siku ambayo yesu ataleta ukombozi katika ulimwengu hiyo ndiyo ilikuwa siku okay so you have said something else you have said siku but me have talked about redemption that the launching day for the redemption that jesus would bring to the earth he decided that that was the day when he would launch that plan that Jesus was going to bring Siku ya kuzindua siku ya kuanzisha ambapo Yesu ataleta ukombozi kwa mwanadamu aliamua Bwana aliamua ya kwamba ile ukombozi Yesu ataleta atai launch hiyo siku wapate kujua iko na vipengee ipi Bwana aliamua Bwana aliamua ya kwamba siku ambayo Yesu ata Bwana aliamboa ya kwamba wakati Bwana Yesu atakapoikomboa ulimwengu He brought the redemptive plan of God and this is the day he unveiled it. Alileta mpango wa ukombozi wa Mungu na hii ndio siku aliifunua. So you may see Aaron Hivi unaweza kumwona Aroni and the animals being sacrificed. Na wale wanyama wakitolewa dhabihu. But in the mind of God. Lakini katika mawazo ya Mungu. He was essentially laying out what the Messiah would do, the steps the Messiah would do, the procedure he would do to redeem man. Alikuwa anawekeza kile ambacho Masia atafanya, ile hatua ambayo Masia atachukua ili kumkomboa mwanadamu. All this is about the Messiah. Hii yote inamhusu Masia. And so he launched it on that day. He launched it in the book of Leviticus chapter 9. Hivyo alizindua katika hiyo siku kwenye kitabu cha mambo ya walawi sura ya 9. Because in chapter 8 they are washed by the blood of Jesus. Kwa sababu kwenye sura ya nane wanaoshwa kwa damu ya Yesu. That was the foreshadow the depiction. Hiyo ilikuwa kiashiria kipaumbele kisimama. And then chapter 9 now they have been washed. Now they are qualified to go and stand before the Lord God. Can't test you the blood alone. The blood and the blood alone. 
Halafu sasa kwenye sura ya tisa wao wanahitimu kwenda kusimama mbele za Bwana kwa kuzingatia tu damu peke yake. And so today, kwa hivyo leo hii, I want now to begin looking at the present day church. Nataka sasa kuanza kuangazia kanisa la sasa. How is the present day church standing before the Lord? Je, ni vipi ambavyo kanisa la sasa linasimama mbele za Bwana? Is this standing well? Je, limesimama ipasavyo? Is she standing right? Je, amesimama ipasavyo? Is she in right standing with God? Je, yuko katika msimamo unaofaa na Mungu? Let us look at what's going on. Wacha tuangazie kile ambacho kinaendelea. Leviticus chapter 10. Kitabu cha mambo ya walawi sura ya kumi. The glory has just appeared in Leviticus, Leviticus 9. Utukufu umeshuka tu kwenye kitabu cha mambo ya walawi sura ya tisa. Just one verse behind like this. Mstari mmoja tu namna hii. The next verse in front like this is chapter 10. Alafu mstari unaofuata mbele namna hii ni sura ya kumi. So look kwa, at this now. Kwa hivyo tazama hii sasa. Aaron sons Nadab and Abihu. Nadabu na Abihu wana wa Aaroni took their censers. Wakachukua vietezo vyao and put fire in them wakaweka moto ndani yake and added incense na kuongeza uvumba and they offered unauthorized fire before the lord kisha wakamtolea bwana moto usio halali contrary to his command kinyume na agizo la mungu so he... fire came out from the presence of the lord yahweh hivyo moto ukaja kutoka katika uwepo wa Bwana yawe and consumed them na kuwaramba and they died before the lord of hosts na wakafa mbele za Bwana wa majeshi then moses said to aaron kisha musa akamwambia aaroni this is what the lord of hosts spoke about when he said hili ndilo alilonena bwana mwenyezi wakati aliposema you remember our lead title that i gave you today je makumbuka andiko letu la mwongozo mada niliyowapatia leo when i said niliposema our guiding statement tonight ya kwamba ka, kauli yetu ya mwongozo usiku wa leo about standing before the lord kuhusu kusimama mbele za bwana that, that statement says ya kwamba hiyo kauli inasema among those that approach me ya kwamba miongoni mwa wale wanaonikaribia i must show myself holy ni lazima nijionyeshe kuwa mtakatifu so he says then moses then say to aaron hivyo musa akamwambia aaroni that is leviticus chapter 10 verse 3 then moses say to aaron musa akamwambia aaroni this is what the lord spoke when he said hili ndilo alilonena bwana wakati aliposema among those who approach me miongoni mwa wale wanaonikaribia i will be proved holy nitajionyesha kuwa mtakatifu i will show myself holy nitajionyesha kuwa mtakatifu in the sight of all the world machoni pa watu wote ulimwenguni in the sight of all the people machoni pa watu wote and i will be honored nami nitaheshimiwa does somebody understand that je mtu alielewa hiyo now sasa i am presenting the picture sasa ninawasilisha taswira the picture about standing before the lord taswira kuhusiana na kusimama mbele za bwana the painting of the gravity Ile... of standing before the lord picha ya uzito wa kusimama mbele za bwana and he's saying leviticus chapter 10 na anasema kwenye kitabu cha mambo ya walawi sura ya 10 he say anasema they saw the plagues in egypt waliona mapigo misri they saw waliona and they saw the dread of the god of israel na waliona lile tisho la mungu wa israeli and then halafu they came to mount sinai walikuja katika mlima sinai and they saw the terror of god na wakaona tisho la mungu the mountain violent earthquake na mlima ukatetemeka kwa tetemeko kubwa kabisa la ardhi fire and smoke moto na moshi the louder trumpets ile sauti kubwa ya tarumbeta they saw that and trembled waliona hiyo wakatetemeka and they were told don't touch the foot of na the mountain na wakaambiwa ya kwamba msiguze pale chini ya mlima and after that baada ya hiyo they were prepared for almost nine months waliandaliwa kwa zaidi ya miezi tisa about nine months yapata miezi tisa with a few days more na siku chache zaidi they were prepared 
properly. Waliandaliwa vizuri kabisa. On how to appear before the Lord. Kuhusu jinsi ya kusimama na kujiwasilisha mbele za Bwana. On the gravity of our Hearing before the Lord. Katika uzito wa kusimama mbele za Bwana. They were prepared on standing before the Lord. Waliandaliwa katika kusimama mbele za Bwana. What Joshua was doing. Kile ambacho Yoshua alikuwa anafanya. They were even told. Na pia wakaambiwa. At one point. Kwa wakati mmoja. That now your ordination is finished. Ya kwamba sasa kutiwa wakfu kwenu kumekwisha. But it lasts seven days. Lakini itakalimilika kwa siku saba. So remain at the entrance. Hivyo bakini katika ingilio. Feeding on the meat. Mkila nyama. And being on the Lord side at the temple of God. Ukiwa katika upande wa Bwana katika hema la Bwana. At the entrance to the tent of meeting. Katika ingilio la hema la kukutania. And he say less. Na akasema la sivyo. You appear before him. Mje mbele zake. Then he kill you. Halafu awauwe. So they knew the procedure. Hivyo walijua hiyo hatua. They knew that it was very detailed. Walijua ya kwamba ilikuwa na vipengee kabisa. And set na ilikuwa imetengwa and established by god on high na ikiwa imeimarishwa na mungu aliye juu and then halafu at one point kwa wakati mmoja this young man huyu kijana huyu vijana hapa hawa vijana hapa they decide wanaamua They have seen the cloud has come. Wameona wingu limekuja. They have seen the fire came out and consumed everything all the sacrifice. Waliona moto ulikuja na kuteketeza kila kitu dhabihu zote. Then they decide. Halafu wanaamua to prepare their censers. Kuandaa vietezo vyao. And put incense. Na kuweka ndani uvumba and light na kuwasha profane fire mioto zisizo halali foreign fire mioto za kigeni strange fire mioto za kigeni and strange incense na uvumba wa kigeni before the lord mbele za bwana he had just arrived alikuwa tu amefika to come and show approval kuja kuonyesha thibitisho to bless Israel kubariki Israel to bless Aaron kubariki Aaron to show his seal of approval and acceptance of the sacrifice kuonyesha muhuri wake wa thibitisho na kukubali kwake kwa dhabihu but the same fire lakini moto huo huo now comes out sasa unatoka and consume nadab and abihu na kuwateketeza kabisa nadabu na abihu and the picture is this na tasira hiyo ndio hii They have fallen down there. Wameanguka hapo chini. And one of them the hand is this way with the with with the sensor. I have quite a bit of detail. Na, with the sensor. Na mmoja wao mkono uko namna hii ukiwa na chetezo. And the sensor is still smoking. Na hiyo chetezo bado inatoa moshi. Lying dead there. Akiwa amelala amekufa pale. Another one also fallen this way. Na mwingine pia ameanguka upande huu. And the sensor has fallen a bit away. Na hiyo chetezo imeanguka mbali kidogo. Still smoking. Ikiwa bado inatoa moshi. And they are dead there. Na wao wamekufa hapo. Standing before the Lord. Kusimama mbele za Bwana is not a joke. Sio mchezo. And the picture that is presented in Leviticus chapter 10 1 to 3 na ile taswira ambayo inawasilishwa kwenye kitabu cha mambo ya walawi sura ya kumi mstari wa kwanza hadi wa tatu. if there is a picture that perfectly bespeaks the condition of the present day church iwapo kuna taswira ambayo inaelezea hasa kabisa kwa ubora taswira ya kanisa la sasa as she stands before the lord wakati anaposimama mbele za bwana ni hiyo hapo because kwa sababu In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Kwenye kitabu cha mwanzo sura ya pili mstari wa saba. He said he took the earth. Alisema ya kwamba alichukua dunia. And he molded man. Na akamuumba mwanadamu. So he made him from the mortal material. Hivyo alitengeneza kutoka kwa vitu asilia. He made him from the earthly earthly things. Alimtengeneza kutokana na vitu vya ulimwengu. The earth. Dunia udongo. And then he breathed the spirit of life the spirit into him 
halafu akapuliza akapumua roho wa uhai ndani mwake and that has always become the biggest challenge for man na kila mara hiyo imekuwa changamoto kubwa kabisa kwa mwanadamu that there is a conflict ya kwamba kunayo mapigano there is a constant fight kunayo mapigano ya mara kwa mara between the spirit and the flesh kati ya roho na nyama between the things the spirit wants and the things the flesh wants kati ya vitu ambavyo roho anataka na vitu ambavyo mwili unataka it is amazing ya shangaza kabisa that after the lord bringing his fire ya kwamba baada ya bwana kuleta moto wake his own fire from heaven moto wake mwenyewe kutoka mbinguni for the redemption of man kwa redemption jil- of people kwa ajili ya ukombozi wa wanadamu ukombozi wa watu and he gave orders na kisha akapeana masharti but you cannot light another fire ya kwamba kamwe hamuwezi kuwasha mioto zingine it was only this fire ulikuwa moto huu peke yake even when they move tent hata wakati ambapo walisongesha hema or they move camp ama wanasongesha hiyo kambi they were supposed to take that fire ili wabidi wachukue moto huo the fire that fell moto ambao ulianguka in leviticus chapter 9 kwenye kitabu cha mambo ya walawi sura ya 9 and they would migrate with it na wangesonga pamoja nayo so that wherever they go hivyo basi popote waenda hapo and they pitch tent again na wakae pale wapige kambi pale when the cloud settles again wakati wingu linapotua tena and they pitch tent na wao wakae pale they would use the same original fire watatumia ule moto ule ule wa kwanza to be able to light incense ili kwamba kuwasha ile uvumba before the lord mbele za bwana to burn incense ili kuwasha uvumba before the lord mbele za bwana that is how it was supposed to be hivyo ndivyo ilipasa kuwa to the extent kwa kiongo kwamba that when the fire died off ya kwamba wakati ambapo moto ulizimika the fire of god that came from heaven moto wa mungu ambao ulitoka kutoka mbinguni the original fire moto ule wa kwanza wa asili when it died wakati ulipozimika and king solomon na mfalme sulaiman had to build a new tent a new tabernacle for the lord ili mbidi ajenge hekalu nyingine hema nyingine kwa ajili ya bwana on the day of dedication as we are going to see katika siku ya kutia wakfu kama vile tunaenda kuona The Lord again came in his cloud. Bwana tena alishuka katika wingu lake and brought a fresh original fire. Na akauleta moto mwingine mpya from heaven again. Kutoka mbinguni tena. But to take another fire. Lakini kuchukua moto mwingine and put some incense of your own. Na kuweka uvumba fulani wako mwenyewe. And then say. Halafu nasema I also want to approach the Lord. Mimi pia nataka kumwendea Bwana and burn some incense nami niteketeze uvumba fulani that is going to be deadly hiyo inaenda kuwa hatari kabisa i don't know what happens with the human mind sijui nini ambacho hufanyiki akili za mwanadamu because when many times kwa sababu mara nyingi when the lord says this is the way wakati bwana anaposema kwamba hii ndio njia and it is established na kisha inaimarishwa and he says this is how to worship na anasema kwamba hivi ndivyo njia ya kuabudu but after a short time lakini baada ya muda mfupi you will always find kila wakati utapata that familiarity ya kwamba mazoea let me repeat this wacha nirudie hii that familiarity causes contempt ya kwamba mazoea huleta madharau you will always find kila wakati utapata ya kwamba that they do the sacrifice ya kwamba wana after a while baada ya muda kidogo they relax now wanatulia sasa you see now they are violating the process sasa unaona ya kwamba wanavunja hiyo hatua and showing contempt na kuonyesha madharau so when you look at the present day church kwa hivyo ukiangalia kanisa la sasa it's a very sad scenario ni tukio la kuzunisha kabisa that they received the original fire at the calvary cross ya kwamba waliupokea ule moto wa asili katika msalaba wa calvary when the messiah just appeared into the scene on the earth wakati masia alipokuja tu duniani and when he stepped ground like this na wakati alipokanyaga ardhini na mahali and immediately was baptized na, in the jordan na punde tu alipobatizwa katika yordani and he stepped out na akakanyaga nje right there pale pale the fire of the holy spirit came from heaven moto wa roho mtakatifu ulishuka toka mbinguni in bodily form katika umbo la kimwili and lighted on him na akamshukia and when god the holy spirit lighted on him una wakati mungu roho mtakatifu alipomshukia when he stepped out to start ministry wakati alipokanyaga nje kuanza kuhudumu the first fire 
the original fire he released Una moto wa kwanza una moto wa asili ambao aliua chini to the church kwa kanisa is Matthew chapter 4:17 Ni Mathayo sura ya 4:17 When is it repent Aliposema tubuni For the kingdom of God is near Kwa maana ufalme wa Mungu umekaribia And then halafu When time goes by Wakati unapoendelea You check the church now Unaangalia kanisa sasa Familiarity Mazoea She has called for herself a strange fire Sasa amejitengenezea mwenyewe moto wa kigeni At the Calvary cross Katika msalaba wa Calvary He brought the original fire A- of repentance Alileta moto wa asili wa toba The original fire of holiness without which nobody goes to heaven. Moto wa asili wa utakatifu ambayo bila hiyo hakuna mtu anaingia mbinguni. The original fire of righteousness which is the garment of rapture, the garment for the kingdom of God. Vazi la asili la uhaki ambalo ndilo vazi takatifu la Mungu. But over time Lakini wakati muda ulipoendelea The present day generation Kanisa la sasa kizazi cha sasa taken up for themselves censers Wamejitengenezea wao wenyewe vietezo And brought their own incense Na kuleta uvumba wao wenyewe And instead of going for the original fire Na badala ya kwenda ule moto wa kwanza wa asili Jesus lit the Holy Spirit lit in the church at Pentecost Hallelujah Ambao Yesu aliwasha ambao Roho Mtakatifu aliwasha katika siku ya Pentecost They have now lit up unto themselves another fire. Sasa wamejiwashia mioto mingine wao wenyewe. An holy fire. Mioto zisizo takatifu. The fire of the gospel of prosperity. Moto wa injili ya ufanisi. The fire. Moto that has no power for deliverance. Ambao hauna nguvu kwa ajili ya ukombozi. When you look at the present day Christian. Ukiangalia wakristo wa sasa hivi. And the way they have trashed away the blood of Jesus. Na jinsi ambavyo wametupilia mbali kabisa damu ya Yesu. How do you know they have trashed it away? Je, ni vipi ambavyo unapata kujua kwamba wameitupilia mbali? And trashed it away. Na ku futilia mbali kabisa because kwa sababu the blood of jesus is repentance damu ya yesu ni toba and if anybody is not walking in repentance na iwapo mtu yeyote hatembei katika toba then you will see obvious sin in their lives hivyo basi utaona dhambi za hadharani kabisa katika maisha yao you see obvious lack and holiness and holiness in their lives unaona kule kukosa utakatifu kwa wazi kabisa katika maisha yao and then you know that these people halafu unajua kwamba hawa watu have not embraced the blood of Jesus hawajaikumbatia damu ya Yesu that washes away all sin ambayo inaosha dhambi zote these people hawa watu have not accepted repentance kamwe hawajakubali toba and so when you look at the present day church na kwa hivyo unapoliangalia kanisa la the sasa perfect depiction of them dhihirisha kiashiria kizuri kabisa kwa ajili yao and the disaster awaiting the church na janga ambalo linangoja kanisa inside hell ndani ya jehanamu is depicted by leviticus chapter 10 inaonyeshwa inadhihirishwa na kitabu cha mambo ya walau sura ya 10 when the lord lit his fire wakati ambapo bwana aliwasha moto wake before aaron mbele za aaron and israel pamoja na israel and then now halafu sasa They went Nadab and Abihu. Nadabu na Abihu and lit their own fire, Wali... a counterfeit fire. Walienda wakawasha mioto zao wenyewe mioto za kigeni. A fire that is strange to the Lord, foreign to him. Mio... Moto ambao ni wa kigeni kwa Bwana. And then he smashed them, burned them by fire. The same fire that came to acknowledge Aaron now came out and killed these ones here. Halafu akawateketeza kabisa, akawateketeza kwa moto. Moto ule ambao ulikuja ili kwamba kum hakikisha aruni uliwateketeza hawa and so you see kwa hivyo mwaona that the same thing happened at calvary ya kwamba jambo hilo hilo litendeka calvary when the messiah lit up the original fire of the cross and the blood wakati masia alipowasha ule moto asili wa msalaba and the tongues of fire came na kisha dimi za moto zikaja they came on the day of pentecost zilikuja katika siku ya pentecost and the fire of god was lit in the church na moto wa mungu ukawashwa ndani ya kanisa time, lakini muda ulipoendelea the present day church kanisa la sasa has prepared for ourselves nimejitengenezea wenyewe some senses uvietezo fulani together with some incense pamoja na uvumba and lit up another fire na wao wakawasha moto mwingine strange fire